Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and look who I've got with me. I've got Dom Corolla. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Dom Corolla, I'm going to introduce to him a little bit more in a little bit, but today is May 8th. It is th Friday. Friday. Yeah, Friday. Day 5,423 of a quarantine, feels like. This morning I thought it was Thursday. Well, these weeks time. have been flying by for sure. It, it has. I blink. All the building we've been doing in the backyard, every time I blink, it's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. Right. But every day's Friday now. <laughs> So, what the heck? Everything rolls together. It does. It does. But uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff today. And uh, so, like I said, we got Dom Carolla here in the studio. Uh, he and I go way back, years and years and years, back to the early 90s at yeah. Disney. And, uh, and we're going to just talk about the old times. We're going to talk about some cool projects he's doing. He's got, he brought a couple of surprises that we're going to unveil on camera. <laughs> Uh, he might Hopefully dance. You like them. He might sing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he might sing. He might yeah. dance. He might act out a part. That's right. I don't know. <laughs> well, it was just great to get out of the house and to exactly. go out for a drive. And you know, I made it here in really good time. And it's just, it's just good to see some people. Yeah. And uh, uh, I washed my hands beforehand, so I think we're doing yes. okay. So we just had lunch. It's all good. Uh, but as usual, uh, I don't think I'm going to be drawing today. But as usual, we've got Dustin in the studio. Hi. And he's going to be handling questions from Facebook. And we've got Nick over in Sarasota who's going to be handling all of our other platforms that we're on today. And hopefully, I don't know if we... Uh, are, are, are people able to see us on uh, Instagram? Unfortunately, no. You, are we, that's <laughs> that's, that's what I'm talking <laughs> Directly in between. You have to sit oh, like that's this. That's awesome. <laughs> that's yeah, sorry, awesome. guys. That's all you guys see. <laughs> <laughs> but the social plan is exactly. you take one. I know we should. I, you should have sat on my shoulders. That's what you should have done. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> well, that's funny. So anyway, so oh, we could do like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like we're in a car. Just, just stack one face behind the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Instagram followers. We uh, we have to do our social distancing. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, we, and we've got, like I said, we've got Nick and Sarah, so he's going to be handling all that. But uh, just to get people started, and, and, and uh, oh, first of all, I wanted to do our usual stuff. Um, uh, first of all, it's Mermaid, and uh, go out and draw some mermaids for Mermaid and support our, our good friend Tom Bancroft, who started this whole thing. And uh, uh, we've, we've been having fun doing some. I did one yesterday. Where's, where's my one I did yesterday? Oh, that was cute. Right little, yeah, little the baby. little, little octo, octopus mermaid. Oh, yeah, that one. That one's cute. Let me get rid of these other ones first real quick so no one sees. Whoops. Oh, let me open this. And uh, we had a good day yesterday. Uh, little mermaid and octopus. There it is. Little mermaid and octopus. It's quite cute there, bud. Yes, bud. <laughs> and, uh... Do it live. Yeah, this is this is this is the magic of working live right here. There we go. Bring that up. So this is our Little Mermaid from uh, from yesterday. It was a lot of fun, and so I encourage you guys to keep doing your mermaid drawings. To be be creative, and uh, support Tom Bancroft, and uh, our buddy. We know him. We do. We certainly do. And. Um, and also, we've got, uh, remember, we've got a crazy sale going on over on our website. Uh, ever since everyone went into lockdown, uh, we know a lot of people are losing their jobs. A lot of people's money are t is tight. And uh, and you're just kind of sitting around. So why not go in? I mean, why, don't you, why not come out better than going in? And uh, so I, you know, Nick and I talked, and we decided to just slash everything. And uh, my introduction to animation course is free. Um We've dropped a lot of stuff down to a dollar. The Photoshop courses, our Photoshop brushes are a dollar. Several of our courses are a dollar. We've uh, other courses that are marked down sixty percent. Now I talked to somebody. Someone sent me a message the other day, and they said they they spent four dollars and they came out with like <laughs> like sixty hours worth of content. It's an amazing sale. <laughs> so yeah. it, it's cool. So why not? You know, who knows how much longer we're going to be doing this? Uh, but uh while well, you can go on over to creatureartteacher.com and we've got plenty of stuff for if you want to learn how to draw storyboard draw animals animate whatever character design write uh color all kinds of stuff so uh so check it out but enough of that 
Let's go back to the most important thing today, and that's Dominic Carolla. That is so kind. Well, <laughs> I'm thrilled to be here. Yes. So thank you very much for, <laughs> for having me. And, and uh, the main, I guess, reason that we decided to just kind of break with a little bit of our quarantine was I had something to give you later today at some point yeah. here. And, and you haven't seen it yet. I haven't. Um, but there was a project that, uh, that I had worked on as a passion project for a while in between all the client work and we'll, we'll talk about different stuff, but just so people have an idea of what, I have a little surprise to share with you okay. that, um, that basically we had some reward levels on uh, a project that we were working on called Tiki Trouble and uh, Aaron is one of a few people that were at a certain reward level, uh, thank you for your support. Absolutely. Uh, that allowed him to be in the book forever and ever. I'm in the book. So, uh, <laughs> I'm a so, character in the book. So now, what version of well, me is in the book? Well, <laughs> I guess we'll see. I guess we're going to see. <laughs> All right, before we go to that, though, uh, just to let, just so people know, uh, who are you? Okay. Who so, is Don Carolla? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't normally go in front of the camera. I'm, I'm pretty much an introvert. Yeah, but, I know. Uh, That's why I love having you on camera. Oh, man. I'm going to feel so uncomfortable today. But um, uh, I started my career many, many years ago, uh, actually... Uh, late 80s, boy that's really dating me, mm -hmm. um, uh, I started going to college where I was going to go for architecture, but I always loved animation, I always loved film and storytelling, uh, I was doing some comic book work uh, as an apprenticeship with uh, Dick Giordano, which some of your comic book fans mm -hmm. may know, and uh, he was just incredible, and so I, I was trying to find a way, how can I tell story through, uh, through the visuals I create, and I love visual storytelling to this day, it's what I do 24-7. Um, and it eventually led me to, well, I really want to do animation, but back then, no one ever left home. I grew up uh, on a, you know, a small home in Long Island, and to think about going to California in the late 80s was like, you know, uh, you could say you're going to Mars, yeah. you know? And, uh, and it was a fellow, I'll never forget, I wish I could remember the guy, but I remember the moment. I was visiting Joe Kubert's school at the time and trying to figure out, you know, where the heck would you go for animation? And there was a guy that was working an Oxbury camera, mm -hmm. big, and yeah. it, he had just gotten it. Uh, they had gotten it loaned to them or given to them from a school called Cal Arts. Right. And Cal Arts had an extra one, and they were both given to them from the Walt Disney Company. So I was like, well, I looked into that school. And I went to the library. Yeah. You know, remember those days? You oh, go yeah. to the public library, and I found out that well, this school, Cal Arts, was a school that Walt Disney had started. Yeah. And and at the time there was not a lot going on with animation schools that I could find. You know, I know Sheridan was big, and I think Ringling obviously. Um, not for not for animation. Wasn't in the nope. not eighties, nope. not eighties. No. Nope. Um, so I really gravitated towards that. It's probably good I didn't know that uh, it was you know a challenge to maybe get in. I just gathered my stuff together. Yeah. And uh, and I was fortunate to get in with a really great group about you know thirty of us and. You know, very very uh, successful group. You know, in Sergio Pablo's one. Was Sergio was a year ahead of me. Oh, was he? Yeah, okay. yeah. And I remember uh, going by and, and uh, bugging him a few times. He was working on uh, a movie. It was like a this rap film that I couldn't believe that he one guy had done that. You know, <laughs> I have a copy of it on VHS somewhere. But just incredible. I mean, he was incredible day one. Yeah, yeah. Sergio was amazing day one. For those of you who don't know, Sergio Pablo is the director of and writer of Klaus. Uh, that was just uh, on. Uh, oh, it's still on Netflix. So. Yeah, yeah. He's he was just incredible. And then uh, three of us were selected uh, in our second year. Remember, there was a moment, and some of the guys that that whether they they watched this or not, but some of the guys may remember this. Uh, Pete Doctor and a bunch of guys were mm -hmm. coming to the school, and um, they were looking to recruit some folks to help them with. A film about these plastic toys, <laughs> and and at the time, uh, this was like nineteen dumb idea ninety one. Yeah, <laughs> stupid idea. So this was like nineteen ninety one, and you know when we were all focused on you know um, doing the hand drawn animation, and they came through and they focused on the juniors and the seniors and. Um, and even though uh, that was happening, Disney came, yeah. and they were doing they were really hot for teacher for internships oh, gotcha. at that time. And three of us were selected. Uh, it was uh, Mark Smith, who you yep. know. Uh -huh. uh, actually, I saw Mark not too long he's ago. He's brilliant. Yeah, he's great. He's director of story, I think, for Frozen, yep. and Frozen Two, and um, uh, and also Mike Stalker. Uh -huh. You remember? Yep. Mike. Yep. And Mike is I think he's an animation director at Pixar still right, right now. I saw Mike uh, a few years, yeah, because he, he worked on, uh, uh, was the one that just came out, I just congratulated him on, is it, uh, 
Oh, onward, yeah, onward, onward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did amazing, amazing stuff, and um, and then actually, uh, the three of us went over to Florida, mm -hmm. and we were only supposed to be there for a very short internship, and most likely we were heading back to California. Yeah. And uh, that was for the film. What was Lion King called before it was called The Lion King of the Jungle? It was, yeah. It was. Was it still that in the summer of '93? I remember it wasn't official. The name wasn't official. At yeah, the time. I can't remember. But anyway, so we King came over in the summer of '93, and, and you guys had been open about four years already. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, May of '89. Yeah, and the, but the but the cool part was the studio was really small. Yeah, it was really small. It was beautiful, and Florida was amazing. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm an East Coast guy, so I was just yeah. like, "Oh my gosh, this is incredible!" Yeah, I think by the time you did your internship, we were probably a hundred people. Yeah, maybe a hundred. But you were still in the main. You were in that the tour yeah, part the, of building. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. Annex One was just built. Yeah, and I think we were we were among like the first group once we finished our our three or four weeks in the because you had to do be on the glass for a while. Yeah. we went to Annex One, and uh, and that was the first time I think I met you was when. Uh, when, when Jim hit me in the head with the football. I don't think I've heard that then story. It was, then it was darts all yeah, after yeah, that. Yeah, it was darts. Yeah, we, we played we, a lot we of darts. Always, we'd always be playing darts, and you could probably find some, some vintage footage of that on Jim's website. <laughs> oh, yeah. playing some darts. But, yeah. uh, and so, so uh, what are some of the films you worked on over at Disney? Well, I started the internship with Lion King. Again, I thought it was only going to be for a little while, but then from that, we um, I thought I was going to be going back to California to work with work on Pocahontas because that was supposed to be the big film yeah right and um, and then I stayed in Florida we I worked on Pocahontas I worked with Ruben Aquino learned mm -hmm. a ton from him yeah uh, I learned charting and timing like incredible he was such a technical animator yeah. I learned so much from him on he was on uh, Powhatan yeah uh, here's a chart for the arm here's oh a chart my gosh, for the, the feather <laughs> here's for the raccoon tail here's <laughs> yeah, for the, but it was great working with him yeah. and then uh, also working with Mark that was Mark's uh, a uh, rough assistant. Uh, uh, Mark and I, yeah, I learned yeah. so much. And we were on Mulan, I think, a year before most people. Yeah. So it was really neat to learn his spacing because Mark, Mark was able to do everything almost on a half drawing, which exactly. was pretty incredible. It's like you know when these, everybody's got different styles, right? But but Mark is so effortless. Yeah, it was just like just kiss the paper. Yeah. And I'm gonna give all halves here, but somehow it's gonna feel really alive and, yeah. and different. So so both of those guys were great, and then. Uh, then I worked with Tom. Yeah. Tom picked me for uh, the Mushu team. Right, Tom Bancroft. And I, yep, and I uh, had some great, great footage and scenes on that. Uh, did a blast on that. And then we did uh, John Henry. We did oh, the yeah. John Henry film. Um, that was really a lot of fun, uh, working with uh, Byron and, and Tom as and well. And Mark Ken directed that. Mark directed it. Yeah. And it was really, really a great, a great short that doesn't get, I think, a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, views yeah, people know. just don't know about. Yeah, it. I know. You know, it's just an incredible featurette film. You know, I think it's like twenty minutes long. Yeah, yeah. I remember perfect. watching that. It was one of my favorites for for a good long while. Yeah, it's like, I love the music from that. Yeah, Tim Hodge did a voice in it. He's the, he's right. the conductor. Right? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. He's the uh, yeah, yeah the, the, the Irish guy. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, and then after that, we uh, did we start Lilo? Right Lilo, I think it was Lilo. Yeah. Lilo was amazing. Uh, Lilo uh, was with Chris and Dean, who are just. Tremendous guys and Dean Dubois, yeah, Chris and Dean. Dean, du Dean Dubois uh, directed uh, the three Dragon movies, How to Train Your Dragon. Chris has gone on; he did the, the Croods and yeah, he's and all kinds of stuff. I think he live action. He just did the the Call of the it was Call of the Wild, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, I think he directed Harrison Ford in that. I didn't know yeah, that. See? That was Chris Sanders. Was Chris Sanders. Yeah. Now I gotta watch it. See, I haven't watch watched it, it yet. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite book too. Yeah, it's my favorite story. All right, well, wow. you're alive. Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but Lilo was geeked out a little. Bit. <laughs> Lilo was amazing because uh, uh, you, you know, supervised the character. Didn't you? I did. I had, I had, uh, I had the um, the hula teacher yeah, was, was right. mine, yeah. but I also got to. I was working with Andreas. I had three characters, which was amazing. I never had yeah. that happen before. Yeah. I had, uh, I was I had Lilo. Yeah. I was working with Andreas as well, and then Byron, Byron Howard, who's an amazing talent. Love this guy. Um, uh, Byron had uh, Cobra Bubbles. Oh, yeah, that's right. But then Byron got pulled into doing a lot more stuff. Yeah. Remember? He just got... He that just, was his gateway to stardom. Yeah, yeah. He just got pulled into a ton of stuff, and, and he came to me and said, listen, you know, can you can you take this Cobra Bubbles stuff? And I was yeah. like, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know? It's like the coolest character. Oh, my show. gosh. It was so fun doing his dialogue. It was so unique. And, yeah. And thankfully, Byron really kind of, you know, set a phenomenal lane for me to kind of drive through yeah. and uh, but that's the only film that I did like you know 1100 feet on 
which was like sick. And you did 1,100 feet? Yeah, I kept it. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty Holy. awesome. And they gave me a great little, uh, Clark gave me a great little gift at the end. Yeah. Like this. But for, the, for those of you that don't know, you know, we measure the amount of animation that we do, or at least back then, in footage. The amount of, literally, feet per, per, uh, uh, well, the feet of footage, film. Yeah, yeah film yeah. footage. Uh, every foot and a half is a second. Yeah. And so, um, for someone to break a thousand feet on a film is a pretty big rarity. Yeah. It's, uh, it doesn't happen very often. Only a handful of people do it per, per picture. So that's Yeah, really cool. so I was grateful, but again, it was because it... I was getting work from yeah. everybody, you know. Cranking. It was cranking. It was definitely cranking. Crank. Yeah. It was. It was cool. I, I kept that rabbit, rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so let's ju so we'll jump ahead. So the studio back in two thousand four, two thousand three, two thousand four, yeah. shut down. Uh, a lot of people spread to the wind. They went all over the place. Some people went to Blue Sky, DreamWorks. Uh, some people left the industry altogether. Uh, you did something that. Um, some people ask me a lot, and they, Aaron, why don't you start your own studio? And mm -hmm. I and I always just say, no, I don't want that headache. I don't want that, you know, the, the I just don't want to do that. And it's and uh, but you did it, and did you've it. been doing it for the last fifth, sixteen fifth, years. Sixteen years. Yeah. Um, and premise entertainment. You want to jump over to his uh, logo, but uh, this is uh, Dominic owns and runs uh, premise entertainment, and you've been doing it for sixteen years. Yeah. Um, I like, to say like? It's a, I like to say it's an artist-driven yes. studio. Yes, exactly. Because um, and, uh, it's an incredible little group that I get to work with, and, and I'll talk about some of I've had the opportunity to work with them just a tiny little bit on a, on a commercial that we did several years ago. A couple of times I actually worked with us. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah sorry, I forgot. And, uh, um, and, I, and it's right. It is an artist-driven, and the way you run the studio is awesome. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to give you the accolades for that but um tell thanks tell everybody you know, yeah a more. and i'll give a little a little backstory that you may or may not be aware of in 2001 after the horrible 9-11 yes uh i was walking around the park because we always used to go and sketch in the park yeah and i said to myself what if the world and this is going to be very relevant i didn't even think about this before this just happened what right. you just said what if the world was to change tomorrow right what would happen would disney be there would you know what would happen what would i do because basically there was nobody in the park suddenly. It was a very strange time. Yeah. So I started thinking, well, maybe I can do some additional animation, maybe on the side or on the weekends or something like that. And I went to management and I said, is there something I could do outside of our contract where, you know, you own everything in the universe? Yeah. And they said, you can do commercials. So I was like, okay, because there was no conflict of interest. Yeah. So I started doing commercials and I would have some of the artists help me on the weekends. They'd come to my house and you know, we work and at that time I was working under my premise logo, my premise company. Mm -hmm. But then when the poop hit the fan, so to speak, yeah. very soon after that, um, Jim, uh, Greg, John. All of a sudden you had a foundation. Yes, yeah. we had a little, and we had clients already. So, uh, but what happened was, what was really, really neat was that when uh, I, there was a couple of roommates that teamed up with me, we formed a company called Project Firefly. Right. Which was uh, literally the day that Disney closed, we had a meeting. Uh, Universal was really cool. They let us use the executive building. And mm -hmm. I said, I need a meeting space for about 40 people. Yeah. And they were so excited <laughs> that they like, use the executive conference room. Yeah. So we, so about 40 people, literally, we got, it was kind of a sad day at Disney yeah. when you turn it in your passes. Mm -hmm. But then there was a meeting, guys down the street at Universal yeah. at like 2.30 and we had like all these people show up and it was great and we just wanted to share with them, listen, a bunch of guys just got together and you know, we mortgaged our houses, yeah. which is like, you know, it's crazy stuff. It is. You know, and uh, and we're going to take on the world, <laughs> you know, and, but it really was, it was like an, a, a, an MFA in business, yeah. in uh, how to build a studio, yeah. uh, how to, how to, you know, make ends meet when you don't know what's happening next week. Right. And you've got, you know, at that time we had, we were hiring a bunch of people because we were making a show for uh, a television pilot called Farm Force, right. which actually won Viewer's Choice Award on Nickelodeon. It was, that's a whole nother story, what happened there, but it was going to be this really, really big thing it was getting picked up and there was, there was some things that happened with investors and stuff like that. And, um, but we did that for about two or three years and it was a big challenge because, you know, we we're a bunch of artists, right? you know, trying to figure our way through. and. And, uh, and you remember Glenn, Glenn Gagin? Yeah, yeah. Glenn joined us, and Glenn was uh, in finance at Disney. Yeah. He, he was a huge help in just trying to That's say, great. you know, what can be done. Yeah. But then, when you have a lot of partners, sometimes people want to go different directions, 
and uh, and that happened about two years in after we finished Curious George. Yeah, we had done um, the Curious George. We had done yeah. about twenty five percent of Curious George film. Yeah, tra- I know my brother Travis. Oh yeah, Travis was with you Travis guys. worked with us for yeah. for a few years there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Actually, I got some pictures of him climbing over other people's desks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do. I got some. I got some good dirt on Travis. Uh, Who does does. I was just gonna say, Who does does I'm like, but live, but live. Yeah, we gotta look at good stuff on Travis. But, um, and then when that was kind of uh, uh, transitioning to what they call a holding entity, I said, well, I still have this company premise, yeah. which, which which really was the seed of what I was doing. And I I talked to uh, the lawyers of the holding entity. I said, listen, I said. For you know, I still need to make a living, and, and I need to kind of figure things out, and I want to you know move forward. And I had some really neat opportunities with Disney Television, right? Which I actually you know I remember the executive I was talking to at the time. Uh, I'll just give his first name, Brian. And I said, uh, Brian, you know, there's a couple of there's those paths in life where you can go left, you can go right. And I'm I'm at a place right now where I want to take the path less traveled, and I'm going to try and go it alone. You know, yeah. You know. And uh, it was honorable. And he was like, oh, "Good luck," you know. <laughs> but, but I, you know, right, right, right away, he was one of they were one of our main clients. That's you know? awesome. But now it was now it was premise for the next fifteen years. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, there you are. And yep. It's funny because you know I know when I when I took on the job of directing Brother Bear, I thought, "Hey, I've made six movies before. I, I know Big how stuff. to do this." Yeah. You know, and I and I you know I was nervous because I I. I'd never directed before, but I thought, hey, I, you know, I, I know how these movies are put together, and and I and I tell the story a lot. I really didn't know what I didn't know, mm-hmm. and so when I was thrown in, I realized right away that yes, I understood the production side of things, but yeah. I just really did not know yeah. how to put together a story and how to do this and a lot of the, a lot of the aspects of what it takes to create a film. I just I learned on the job. Uh, did you? kind of go through the same thing where you know it's like yeah man I've, I've worked in an animation studio for yeah. years I know how to make movies yeah. and then you get in there and you go yeah. oh crap you, you get the realization of okay well there's payroll every two weeks you've got overhead yeah. you've got insurances you've got liability insurance yeah. which a lot of people don't talk about you know, it's very <laughs> very expensive Yeah. Uh, and all of a sudden it's like oh my gosh look at this burn yeah. you know and, um, and then you go and this isn't a story I've told publicly ever but some of my my uh, former partners know it as well. You go eleven months without, without a paycheck. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you got a family of four. Yeah. And you're living off a lifestyle where you were getting crazy bonuses prior. At Disney. Yeah. yeah. Oh, had, we had, did well. We had at agents. Yeah. Yeah, they, it was we fun. all had this agents. This is great. Yeah. This is wonderful. Thank you, George. <laughs> yeah, it was great. But now all of a sudden, boom, yeah, exactly. you're on another rail. But guess what? You still got all that stuff that this train needs to be fed with. Exactly. And there's nothing coming. Yeah. So it was a crazy, crazy time to say yeah. the least. Yeah. You know, but it, but I always think about that moment in um, uh, Indiana Jones where you know it is absolutely a step of faith yeah. where you throw down the sand. You may not be able to see it. Yeah. But you have to take the step. Right. You mean and because and actually Tiki Trouble is all about that when we get to it. It's all about. What happens if you don't take that step? You know, you'll never know. You don't want to be seventy-five and say, "I oh, should, I could." Oh, I'm too old for. Yeah. Blank that. Yeah. You're never too old. Yeah. Take a step if you, if you, if you, you know, you have to be educated about it. If it's in your heart. If it's, if in, it's your in your desire, heart, you don't want to put anybody at inf- risk. Yeah, exactly. And you say, "Listen, you line I, your ducks I've up. got some savings. I, I'm going to do this." And you know, and, and you talk it over with your significant other, wife, husband, whatever, and say, "You know, I really need to scratch this creative itch." Mm-hmm. Because if not, it's gonna it's gonna bother me my whole life. Yeah. You know, it, the industry is always gonna be there. Yeah. You know, there, there's we were just talking at lunch. There's opportunities that have come to me. There's up I know there's tons of opportunities come to you. But why do we continue to do what we're doing? Because we enjoy it. <laughs> I love it. I know. We, you know. So it may we be talk crazy. about this a lot over lunch. Yeah. yeah. It may be crazy. It may be unsettling. It may be unsure. It, you know, sometimes you may not know what's happening Monday. And guess what? Payrolls do. Yeah. And you've got it's still a bunch of people you got to pay. Yeah. And they're always before you. Always. That's the other thing. They're always before you. You should be the last one to get paid. Yeah. If you get paid. If you get paid. That's the that's the big one. Yeah. Because yeah. we've uh, I know Nick and I have had a few uh, empty paychecks, but you everyone else to. got paid. You have to. You have to. And and, and right. I think it. You know, I'll say this, and and not in a boastful way or anything. And again, you you know me. I've got my three Fs. Yeah. Friends, family, well, yeah. fake family, friends, and. 
I will always know and look back. I still have, I you know, still work with Iris. She's amazing. Yeah. My, my uh, finance manager. We've never missed paying anyone. Yeah. Ever. That's great. In 16 years. That's great. You know. So I may have missed a bunch, <laughs> but no one's ever. Well, that's the key, and that's what people don't realize. Yeah. And, and a lot of people, young people, that say, "Hey, start your own studio." Yeah. You know, it's one of the reasons the studio in, in here in Florida, the animation studio at Disney, shut down. You know, I couldn't throw numbers out there because I'm not there anymore. But you know, when we were a full studio, we were burning almost a million dollars a week in salaries. I believe it. And we were the cheap studio. And we were the cheap studio. Yeah. So just under a million dollars a week were being spent yeah. just to pay people at the yeah. studio. And so if you didn't have a movie to go on to to justify that money that was just money being yeah. burned literally just caught on fire and burning into the air and so that's what happened back then is that we just didn't have the content to um to fulfill you know that many people so we had to that's why they shut it down yeah, yeah. It was a, it's a tough thing but uh but yeah so starting your own studio you go through all that and and it's just it's way more responsibility than than i was willing to do plus i just had a different path i wanted to do but i I'm so glad that you did it, and that we've been able to work together. Hopefully, um, work together again. Oh, of course. Yep. And uh, um, I'm going to try pulling this up on uh, Vimeo. We switch it over, Dustin, when I tell you to. But, uh, um, but Nick and I, um, not Nick and I. I'm sorry. Uh, Dom and I, a few years ago, and some of you folks that are watching in Europe um, would know this commercial. It's a uh, John Lewis commercial. It was an animate piece of animation called The Bear and the Hare. And it was a very cool uh, product the way they did the production because at first I was I was in the middle of doing some other things and I wasn't sure if I was gonna do it. I didn't realize they had already been talking to you yeah. separately and then they came to me because we had done Brother Bear and um, and they were interested in me doing some design work and, and directing the animation of which actually Dom and I directed the animation together. And uh, but it was a really cool way they did the production in that they we did the animation uh, hand drawn two D. I did paper, you did uh, digital, digital. Uh, and then those were scanned and uh, colored. Uh, but then they were printed out. That each drawing was printed out on a card on a piece of board and laser cut out, and then laid into a virtual uh, or a real set, a three D like a stop motion set, and it was all filmed like that. Yeah, and it had this really cool look. Um, let me pull this up real quick. I was supposed to have it ready before we started, and I forgot. Well, one so of the I one of the neat things of that at that time when you came by, we were working on a DreamWorks feature at that time. Do you remember this? Yes. And um, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about, but because that feature, certain things happen. But um, but we were on it for a while, and then this gap happened with uh, with DreamWorks and. DreamWorks changed as a company at that time. Right. But um, but at the we had a great window to do this. Yes. So it was exactly. almost like it was almost like it was meant to be. Yeah. So we we did this from from zero. Yeah. We were zero to to finish bottle. in one summer. One summer. Yeah. It was and like it was three a months. Great summer. It was a. It, it was, I remember because I was living down in South Florida. Yeah. And I was living on the beach. I was living by yeah. myself in this house that I rented literally on the beach and I'd sit in my room and I would <laughs> animate during the week yeah. and then I'd go swimming in the ocean and then on the, <laughs> you know, on every Monday I'd hop in my truck and I'd drive up to Orlando and I'd be with Dom and the whole rest of the crew for two or three days and I'd bring work back with me and yeah. draw on the beach and it was like, <laughs> it was we did this whole summer, it was, it was great. It was but anyway, so this is the product uh, that came out of that, so I want to play it real quick. And uh, like I said, some of you may already know this. Some of you may have seen it a hundred times. Some of you may have never seen it. But uh, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy it. And hopefully the uh, our platforms won't cut us because we're doing something that's copywritten. But we'll see. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, and uh, do apologize to the Instagram viewers for the crop. Yeah. <laughs> Someone 
Christmas of 2016, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and um, you know, we did basically. Dom and I were responsible for all the animal animation, and then all, that was all sent to London, who the the directors of the entire commercial handled getting it all, you know, sh uh, shot and uh, brought into um, brought into. Uh, well, they shot on a real stage. Yeah, exactly. Because that other yeah. team in London, that was the. I guess the stop motion team that was using our drawings yeah. as the cutouts, uh, and those sets were incredible. It was. You know, it was Elliot Deer and uh, Ben was. Yeah. Uh, ben Lowell. Yeah. Was amazing. Uh, one of the producers, and then um, also, uh, oh gosh, the other main guy. El Elliot the guy Deer. Flew over it. I know, and then yeah, Yves, Yves, how do you say ah, that? Anyway, those did. are the directors. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Once you get to 50 plus, some of the wrinkles are smoothing out, and I apologize. <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, I, I some remember, of the wrinkles in our brain. I remember people now by using the smartphones in my, in my like, uh, was it this company? And they're like, oh, yeah, hey, how's it going? I have to look at old emails. It's, yeah. I'm sorry. So um, why don't we let, let's go to Tiki? Let, let's do that. Okay. Is that cool? Well, yeah, that is cool. Yeah, we can definitely yeah, show. because I know we're yeah. gonna have we're we're gonna have people asking questions. Yeah. Too. Yeah. We, yeah. We had had a couple of questions so far. Um, and there's one. So when it comes to studios in general, like, would you say they all have like a um, would you think that they're all like generally friendly, or do you or do you feel they have, or do you feel that some might have like some sort of like antagonistic attitude to them? No. Do you want to answer first? Well, I was going to say I, to me every studio. Not that I've worked in a ton of studios, but every studio I've ever worked in definitely has a different personality. But I would never say any of them was ever antagonistic. I mean, we're no. all kind of in the same game. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, you know, I work with a lot of young people as well now. Um, if you do work at a at a big studio. Uh, it's a wonderful, amazing time because somebody's always better than you, right? Yeah. And I always took that as this is awesome. That's why I would hang out in the layout. I'd hang out in backgrounds. I'd hang out yeah. in all these other places because yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, look what this guy's, look what this gal's doing. You know, it's really, really. So what I always tell young people is, absorb as much as you can yeah. because the realities of our businesses, that studio may always be there, but your spot at the studio may not. And yeah. I don't see it as a negative. I don't see it's like you know that is the nature. So if you go in with that mentality, you can enjoy thirty years there, yeah, or three months, right? You know, and I think that that's kind of the way in the new world that we're kind of living in. Yeah, I think that's that's a good way to approach it. Good, good and advice. Al and also, is there a story behind the name Cobra Bubbles? Feels like there has to be. I think it's probably a. Yeah. A Chris Sanders. Yeah, that have to go way back to them. Chris yeah. Sanders is a crazy genius basically yeah. and he just yeah the, Lilo and Stitch is kind of his his uh, incarnation <laughs> yeah so yeah, I think Cobra Bubbles I think it's just taking like the hardest craziest thing you can imagine put against yes. the you know the softest Softness. most delicate thing and just I putting together in a name yeah the contrast so. of it I think you nailed it but let's go ahead and let's jump yeah. over to this real quick and then we'll go into more questions okay so um, so again this was a side project mm -hmm. that uh, again was like just like a creative itch that has to be had to be scratched. It took a little bit longer. You yep. know what's happened in the last couple.
couple of years. Yeah. These were a little bit yeah. more challenging to finish. But we got it done, which is something that I think is really important to get projects exactly. done when you start them. And the, the thing about it, too, is that it's, it's a matter of trying to find something that is a reflection of yourself in some way. Right. You know? And uh, so this book, and again, the timely nature of even it coming out right now is really important because it's all about being courageous in the face of fear. Right. Like, don't, don't live a fearful life because you'll never know the life that you were truly meant to live. That's awesome. So that's what this is all about. Yeah. So, so we could talk more about the show in a little bit, but I want to show you okay. for the first time. This is uh, what happened was we had a we had a really small kind of uh, a pre-order fundraising version. Basically, the book was um, uh, not a lot of these were made. Let's right. just put it that way. Um, and th I wanted the large format version, which is like ginormous, uh -huh. and that that's another problem that I found out later in terms <laughs> of cost. But uh, but I, I loved like the old Disney books of the fifties. Yeah, yeah. These giant books. Yeah. And I would open them up, and I'm not not that I'm that old, but I would buy old Disney books. Yeah. Uh, and old. I am old. <laughs> and I and I'd open them up, and I just would get lost in the adventure. Yeah. I'd get lost in the art, and you know, you, there's no better feeling for me than to sit down, you know, in a library or or on your couch. It's raining outside. And you pull off a big adventure book off the shelf. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to capture that. That's great, man. And that's what this I was. So this is the special edition, which is the large version. The one that's that's available for regular folks is the uh, standard edition, gotcha. which I have an extra one for your. For All your right. Can I show this to the camera? Roll? Sure. See, it's this got my name on it. Oh yeah, wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, you know what it was with this this horrible situation that we've got going. I have gone out to a few people that have said, "Hey, listen, I'm not that far away. Can you just, you know, I'll drop it off at the porch." But Aaron was like, "Let's just let's just do it live." Yeah. So, do it live. <laughs> so it's Come a live. really large format. I Very, love it. Yeah, I'll let you. Okay. I'll let you because I. Let you yeah, zoom in on a little bit. A little bit. So take your trouble. Now, pose um, for the camera. <laughs> it's about a life transformed because basically he starts out as a regular person that has these dreams and desires that he's gonna, you know. Actually, oh, I've got a tiki a commercial. Is there any way to show it on? Uh, yeah. Okay, if you go to, um, if you go to our little baby YouTube channel, uh, that right on the main page, the main video is a two-minute commercial that Robbie put together. Robbie's amazing. Okay. You met Robbie. Dustin oh, yeah. you met Robbie. Yes. Robbie works with us. And uh, uh, okay, let me go here. Hold on. Sorry. So anyway, so it's about it's about having all these dreams and desires that someday I'm gonna do this. Someday I'm gonna do this. Well, you know, someday happens sometimes, and your dreams get shattered, or sometimes someday never comes along because yes. you just didn't make the time for that someday. And you know, one of the things, not to get too philosophical, but uh, as I get older, I appreciate more and more moments like this. Where I get to see you know, friends and I get to spend time together. We get to talk about things because you know we never know what tomorrow brings. This is right here, the trailer. Uh, yeah, click on that one. By the way, Austin says hi. He says love you, Dad, Dustin. Okay, Dustin, so, uh, quickly switch it over. Yes, 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 yes. We back it back up. Okay, so he here is. Kind of sums it up. Actually, this is it. So this is a commercial for Tiki Trouble. Yeah.
So it kind of very kinda nice. Sums up. Very nice. So, yeah, so there's a little incident that happens to him when he's young that kind of knocks his life off course, and and uh, it takes the three old ladies that live next door, does, does, Florida, does Virginia, and next. Georgia, to kind of <laughs> get his life back on track. So nice, I love it. Yeah, I love it. So inside the book, there was three slots that people chose to. Uh, to get their likeness put in, every right. one of them, <laughs> and uh, uh, you are on page eleven. But oh, yeah, I'll just let you. There's a there's a page here. I did a little quick quick sketch for you in here. Did you? Yeah, did you know? yeah something like that. Oh, nice! Yeah. Holy moly! Look at that. And then you're on page eleven. You want to show that to the camera? I'll zoom in on it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> you know that you have done. In all the years I've known you, <laughs> literally since the day I met you, I was like, "Man, is he just rude or is he?" Like, that has not changed. He, he even does that to me. Like I'll be yeah, like, that "Hey, hasn't that, changed do you think no?" Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like twenty-six years. That hasn't changed. That doesn't change. I know. Change. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love this. No, I, I, I love that. Uh, that's a good character trait. Yeah. So, are we ever going to see this animated? Well, he, here's some more backstory. Um, this is a full screenplay. Yeah. And uh, what happened was I wrote a treatment of about, it was about 45 page treatment. And then, you know, a good friend of ours who's a fantastic writer, uh, I said, Jeff, Jeff Han, I called oh, him. Yeah. Up. I said, Jeff, I said, can you help me with this? And, you know, there's obviously when you're doing a screenplay, there's a lot more. <laughs> Wait a minute. What happened? <laughs> I love <want> it. <laughs> That's a good one, too. Is it? Okay, Holy good. Smokies. I didn't know what. I was like, man, I don't know. I hope he's, you know, because it's always tricky. I'm not a caricature artist. Right. So you can see that you kind of stand out. You're a little bit more realistic than other people. Can you show? There I am. I'm in the book. <laughs> Do you see your, uh, you see your right in there? there. <laughs> the, the, I wanted, is there a specific drawing that I'm doing? Oh, the shirt and everything. everything. That's your drawing. Your drawing's on the sketch pad. Oh, yeah. That is my drawing. That's yep. the rhino. Yep. Oh no kidding! And that's the bag that you love that the people <laughs> make for you. Oh, we got it. Oh, Lilo, Lilo Rosh. Okay, so you folks uh, at home, you know I love the Lilo Rosh art bags. Yeah. The, the, that the bag is actually hanging behind you, Dustin. Yeah. Here. The one that's in the book is right here. <laughs> actually, so, there's a photo in the uh, reference I could show you. Like, yeah. So there. here's my art bag, and there's the art bag right there, sitting there, because I take it with me everywhere. And which is a great. And you were doing a lot of rush. traveling at this. Yeah, show, show the bag again. There's the bag, and uh, I got it all. I don't have anything in it right now. And, then and there's there. And is. I'm not sponsored by the bag company. I don't no, know them at no, all. No, not at all. But they're wonderful yeah. friends in, in India, and they make all these bags yeah. by hand. And so, I try to promote them as much as I can. They're LiloRosh.com. Uh, their art bags are fantastic, and they're in the book. They're in the book forever. So I if they want to send me a free bag, <laughs> I will not have fun. I'm not to that at all. But you were it. doing a lot of traveling at the time. And since this book primarily takes place in this fictitious uh, island called Matura, where people don't want to be bothered from the outside world, I was like, well, what best spot to fit you in? Because there's only three spots. Right. And I love you're it. You're right next to the villain, unfortunately. Oh, right on. Yeah, That's there's okay. a little section here where I have to clarify that they're not, we're not talking about you. We're talking about him. Right, right. A shady, it says there's a shady character in the airport. Hey, I'm shady. <laughs> you even got my shirt. I have that same shirt. Yeah. 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 That's where we pulled it from. I yeah. love this, man. Yeah. I'm honored. Thank yeah. you and so I much. I love the fact that he's at an airport because last because last, last two years is nothing but exactly. traveling everywhere. Exactly. So it's, so it's perfect. It's editing. fantastic. I love and this. And you also have a tiki in there because you were part of that reward level. Do you remember the, the tiki icon? No. I tiki, oh, yeah? Tiki avatar. All at the end. All at the end. The credits page. Okay. This is so awesome. <laughs> There's my tiki. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm on the lower, lower right. Yeah, yeah so it was, it was Ray, Kevin, and you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know both those other guys. Yeah. Ray is the fellow that uh, helped Nick get his desk. Oh, right, yeah. And Kevin is uh, my live action partner. No, no Kevin. kidding, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I love the paintbrush. Yeah. <laughs> and the hat you would wear all the time. This is awesome, man. So Thank the you other, so much. No problem. Thank you. And because of it took a little bit longer for everybody, what I did was I took the credits there and I left them in all the books in perpetuity the ones at Barnes & Noble, the ones at Amazon.com. So wherever they are, who's ever was in those levels, they'll be in there in the regular books when you buy them. You know, oh, outside that's great. Of, you know, because 
Fantastic. These are different. These are the special edition ones. So, uh, so getting something done for Kickstarter like this is hard, isn't it? It's really hard. Yeah. It's really hard. And you know, it, it should be called more kick in the pants. Yeah. Kick in the because pants. Uh, when, you know, uh, I was working, with, Mac was working with us a lot at that time. Yeah. And, and one of the main reasons why I wanted to do it was because I needed, I needed accountability to get my own thing done. Yeah. You know, it was really hard because, you know, with work and clients and you're trying to, you're trying to keep payroll going and, and you, know, you have work. Yeah, we work, more, and we're not forty-hour week jobs. No, you know, this is seven-day jobs. Exactly. So trying to find the time to do that was always a big challenge, and especially trying to take the screenplay and bring it down to sixty pages of you know the pertinent pieces. That was a challenge. Um, but I had gone on enough pitch tours, and things were going really good with this in one particular studio. Um, but then that studio ran into some troubles and did some massive reductions. But um, but what what I did find was the journey opened up a whole new opportunity to me where, you know, just like everybody, we have a lot of content. Yeah. We have crazy amounts of content, but yes. we don't have time. Right. You know, and the other challenge is resources. Yeah. So about two years ago, uh, right before my parents started getting sick, I launched a publishing company. And I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do another crazy thing. I talked to my wife. I said, Love, we're about to dump a bunch of money into his wife's name is Love. My wife's name is Love. Not a great name. Yeah. 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 And it's her real name. I thought she was from Hippie parents, but she wasn't. Her dad was actually in the ministry, uh, or he was going to be in the so it was a wonderful thing. Her middle name's Lee, and she probably hates me to say that. <laughs> but um, but basically, I said to her, I said, um, we're going to launch a publishing company yeah. now, you know, and, she, and it's great when you have somebody that fully supports you, yeah. and she was like, okay, you know, like, <laughs> okay. and I said, I said, we'll figure it out. That's the craziest thing you ever said. And, you know, yeah. it's going to cost some money, because you got to set things up, you got to, you know, you got to be legitimate there's certain things you have to do and we set it up and the main reason why we set it up was obviously for Tiki but not just for Tiki but for a bunch of other properties right so we have a company called premise press which has two more titles coming out this year not oh. gone whatever yeah um, and uh, and we have three titles out now and what it's allowed me to do is to take the, the screenplays mm -hmm. that we have and streamline them and say okay well we're gonna have these will be the publishing titles of them Wow. And that's basically what we're doing. So that's, that's been great. the big focus. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Man, entrepreneurs. Yeah. Entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. Not to be confused with manures. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hate manure. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, you want to open up to some questions? Sure. We can do let's that. Let's do some questions. All right. Um, I've got a couple that have been sitting here for let a little me, while. Before yeah. that, let's. I just want to mention some a little bit about the art. Oh, yeah. Please because, do. Because uh, this book... Could not be made just by me. Right. We all know how that goes. Yes. So a huge part of this book is my partner in crime, uh, Ryan. Who I think you've met, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Ryan Feltman. Ryan Feltman. Yeah. Yep. Um, Self-taught artist, amazing uh, with color, paint, pretty much anything. Yeah, He's right. one of those guys. You know, who he reminds me of. He reminds me a lot of Bob Walker. You remember how Bob oh, was good at everything? Yeah. Like everything, sports. Yeah. You, you name yeah. it. Just throw whatever it is. He's yeah. great at it. Yeah, exactly. Ryan's like that. So. Ryan stuck with me through this challenge, and it may, obviously, you know, he, he did all the paints over my tonals right and everything, off. and and I could show you some of the behind the scenes of some of that stuff. So he's a huge part of this. Uh, Robbie, who you met, he's a huge part of this. Yeah. Uh, Enoch, who I think you may, yeah, may I know, know. Yeah, he's I know, a big, yeah. just a bunch of people to you know because you need those people just like you have this incredible team. Yeah. To you, you know, nobody's a one man show. No, it's a, it's a, it's, you know? it's always our project, yeah. not my project. Yeah. It's yeah. You know. So it's really important. So I just yeah. want to make sure that you know that's a you got some important. accolades. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's, a yeah, big, that's a sign of a good leader big too. Part of it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because I figured we could do some questions and we can jump over to some of the other uh, you know JPEGs that you yeah, got. Yeah, yeah, we can do sure. that too. Yeah. But uh, we've had a few questions here, and usually we we do questions and yeah. answers and stuff. Um, but uh, Facebook question: Have you worked on any animated series? Uh, we've done a lot of direct to what used to be called direct to consumer, direct to DVD, whatever. You, uh, animated series specifically, on a regular ongoing basis, no. Uh, Elements four series, yes. Yeah. But not on a regular ongoing basis. Okay. We were just in talks to potentially do something very large as a series, but I don't know what's going to happen with that. And, and yeah. we never started, say never, yeah, right? Never say never, and, yeah. and you always want to kind of see what's the what's the resource pool available. Right. Because you need a lot of people to pull that series off. Hi hey everyone. I got a cliche question, but do you guys think traditional animated features would come back in the near future? Well, I think they already did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. So I think I think the especially with the coronavirus, I mean, it was already you know, the way 
our content is distributed has already started to shift with all the online uh, streaming platforms and all of that. But even now, um, we're going to see, an, I think, an even more dramatic shift uh, with the way you know the world has transformed us in the last two months. And so, uh, which is going to open up our opportunities for studios to start creating 2D a lot content. More, a lot more. And, and not just studios, but individuals, right? Yeah. I mean, I remember when, again, just going back to that summer of Bear and a Hair, we were we went digital like pretty much right out of Disney. We we had to get some teaks and and uh, you know because we had to come up with systems that were you know we had there was caps at Disney yeah. which was this ginormous multi billion million dollar system. proprietary right. thing and then we were fortunate enough to have Pam Darley you know Pam yeah. she's a sweetheart and super smart so Pam was one of our first uh, hires uh, when it was with Firefly right. and one of the really neat things was that you know we had to find off the shelf systems. And at that time, we were looking at TV Paint. It wasn't called TV Paint here. It was called Bauhaus, mm -hmm. I think it was. So we had that. And we had um, uh, Harmony. It wasn't Harmony. It was Opus. Okay. And, you know, they were like $25,000 a seat back then, <laughs> uh, which was a ton for us, but nothing compared to the $22 million cap system. Yeah, right. But we needed something to, to put a film through. Yeah. What's great now, we talk about doing films, literally, a handful of people can make an animated I know. picture film. It's crazy, like I a mean, cartoon saloon. Exactly, and, you know. and those guys. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Tom Moore and everything he does, and mm -hmm. you know, and I think their budgets that you, if the U.S. cost would probably be around eight million dollars, ten million dollars. Exactly right. I mean, that's pretty. That. It's pretty phenomenal. It's pretty amazing. You know? But cannot five yeah. people in a house make a film? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it started with Secret and Nim. We're trying to do it. Yeah. It's, it's taking forever, I know. but we're trying. I know. But again, you know better yeah. than anybody. That's like, the, yeah, the other thing people don't realize. Everyone, uh, Most people out there know that I work in TV paint. Well, it was Dom Carolla that got me turned on to TV paint. Yes, yeah. I remember that conversation. Yeah. yeah. We gave you a little guest office down the hall. Yeah. And uh, we tried to get you involved with Harmony. You were like, no, no, no. <laughs> I didn't like it. And it, it wasn't a lot of fun back then, yeah. that's for sure, because it was very, it's vector based. Yeah. Uh, and I hadn't done any digital hand drawn you animation. Done any. Had never done it before. No. That's why I was still working yeah. on paper. And you're a freak with paper because you're able to like do 10 feet a week or more than that. <laughs> you know, like it's nothing. So uh, there, there was the learning curve of that. But I remember you right. said, you're like, well, what's the good one? If it's just me, it's just me. I remember because you were getting a little frustrated. I don't know if you remember this. I, remember. <laughs> I do. I do. And I, I said, you know what? I said, I think TV Paint's right for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yours, you yeah. Know, and, and TV Paint's great. The only thing is when you're, uh, I don't think they have the networking capabilities that Marvel yeah. has, which was helpful for larger productions. It's not right. to say you can't do a film. Obviously, people do movies with TV Paint. Yeah, because they're, yeah, I mean, uh, Cartoon Saloon's doing all TV Yeah, paint, everybody, so. well, most European features do TV Paint. It's yeah. just that, you know, what did you get married to, you know, yeah, at that exactly. time? And yeah, it's like, yeah. So. Actually, one of my favorite uh, music videos that I actually recently found again called uh, the the song's called Freak of the Week is made by a metal band, but we saw we saw a clip of it uh, at CTN two years ago uh, at oh, yeah, the yeah. Uh, TV paint booth, and uh, and I recently found that again and. All the animation on it is done in TV paint. Yeah. It looks yeah. awesome. It does. Well, it looks like it was done in, uh, in yeah. ones, I think. Yeah. yeah, it was on ones. Yeah. 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 And again, that's the difference, you know, bitmap and vector base and everything else. YouTube comic. Dom, your book looks uh -huh. incredible. Great. You know, you can get it at tiki, tikitrouble.com. Tiki, oh, there you go. Tikitrouble.com. You can get any version. Actually, we still have a few. Let's see, we should have put that up as a slide. You, you can. Uh, you can just go to tikitrouble.com. Yeah, go to tikitrouble.com. We don't have it as a slide, but oh, yeah, we yeah. bring it up as sorry. a slide. Yeah, yeah. would have been more professional. That's true. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did race over here, and we had a, I had a big sub. <laughs> we, we, had, we had a really big lunch, <laughs> oh my gosh. and uh, we got carried away catching up. Yeah, so. yeah. It's really good. <laughs> but yeah, um, and then we have all the versions there. We've got this, there's still a few special editions. We've got, we've got a few of those set aside, okay. but you can get those. Those are obviously a little bit more costly because of the process. And then we've got a hardback and a paperback, which are very economical. Awesome. So, TikiTrouble.com. Uh, Tiki Tiki and we do have a latecomer who is asking, sorry, who is the awesome, talented person Aaron is interviewing? Aww. That would be Dominic Carolla. Is that my wife? He's the 12th man to ever walk <laughs> on the moon right behind Jim Jackson. <laughs> and the person asking was Wales and Galato on Instagram. What's that? The person that asked the question what is goes by the name Wales and Galato on Instagram. I or Gelato. 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 Yeah, Wales Gelato. and Gelato. Yeah. Gelato. Yeah. Or Gelato. You could say I'm that. I'm used I'm used to saying G with G's. <laughs> <laughs> the Jez for J's. Uh, YouTube question <laughs> to Dom. 
When you animated Mushu, how did you do the acting references for him? He's a quadruped dragon with a lot of human characters, so where did you get the idea of how he should move? Thanks. Well, uh, remember when Tom was first starting the character, it was, you know, you couldn't get a more animated character to get in a movie than Mushu at the time, right? Yeah. And Tom couldn't be more of an animated person yeah. than he is. Yeah. And one of the first things that I remember doing... <laughs> 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 he always reminds me of Homer Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that um, that I did, you remember the old the old black and white printers that we used to have in the in the library there? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Video printers? Yeah. So I went to Tom and I said, Tom, I said, I'm going to go through all this uh, you know, Eddie Murphy stuff and I made a board for myself yeah. at the time of just Eddie Murphy like mouth shapes and movements and things like that and then, yeah. and then um, uh, to try and see well how can I push those types of poses and then the really neat thing was we had such a great solid little team it was Tom Charlie Bonifacio oh, me yeah. uh, Rob Corley uh, John Weber jo joined the team I'm trying to think I think that may have been it yeah. I'm not sure but we had such a tight little team whenever somebody came up with something cool in a shape, whatever, whatever it would be, and yeah. whether or not it was Tom or Charlie or myself or, or Rob or, or or whoever, we would share that. Yeah. And and I think that became a really really fun process for me because it, again it was I'm doing my own exploration yeah. in my office. You know, Tom, who's the supervisor, he's doing his exploration, yeah. which you know we're going to follow. But of course, we're trying to you know, no one had seen that type of character per se. So it was kind of neat when we would get together and people would show like, oh, look at that. That's a cool pose. Yeah. That's going to be a Mushu pose. I love that process. And yeah. it's funny. There's an irony to it, though, because you, you, you go through that process. And by the end of the movie, the character's so well-rounded, now you're ready to make the movie. Yep. <laughs> wasn't that what happened with, with, with Belen? Wasn't there that character in Lilo changed at the end? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. So yeah, it's just that's just what happens. And these characters become so real, and by the time they're they're real enough to animate, you've already animated yeah. the movie. You're done. You're done. <laughs> yeah, by the time you finish, you're done. Yeah, yeah. And and that's what every project, right? It it's is. like you know, there's a there's a great uh, artist. I I don't know him personally, and, and I don't think he claims to own this saying, but he says it a lot. Jake Parker, you know, who Jake Parker is no. He's a great, great guy. Really, really good artist. Um, he says, finish, not perfect. Yes. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And that's like the, the, the toughest thing. And even like for TE Trouble for me, yeah. there's pages I'd love to go back to. Oh, yeah. You know, and I did many times. And then I'd get like a slap from Robbie or Ryan or, you know, I'd just leave it. Yeah. Just keep, just finish it, you know? Yeah. So well, that's, uh, uh, well, uh, Lasseter has a, a, John Lasseter has a similar saying, which is, you know, we never finish our films, we just release them. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I have heard that. Absolutely. So, I yeah. um, kind of have another question here. Uh, Dom, can you talk about any unfinished, Unfinished projects you were developing at Firefly. Unfinished at Fire yes, we had a bunch of um, uh, a bunch of content that we were starting to develop. Uh, each each person kind of had something uh, that they brought to it, and they still have that because that's kind of the way everybody kind of kept things. But um, so I can't talk about theirs. Uh, I can talk uh, a little bit maybe about uh, well, a good one would be Farm Force, which is known. It's mm -hmm. a very known piece. And we, we started this television project in, a, in an effort to save jobs, to yeah. do what we can do. We mortgaged our houses. People didn't know, you know what yeah. we had done. Uh, they just knew that they had a check. We had a, we had a 401k. Oh. We, had, we had Med 90 plans. Oh. I mean, we were like, hey, we can start a studio. Let's go do this. <laughs> we can do it. We can do it. How much debt am I in? Uh, but, yeah, um, that's just, it's so, killing me. So we uh, did that, and we, we were like, okay, well, let's get this, let's get something in the pipe. And we had met a couple of great people, uh, Robin Cowie. I don't know if you know who he is. He's a he's a local live action producer, uh, and um, and another well known person from a very well known family had showed up at us at our door. Literally, yeah. had showed up at, at the studio. We were on the back lot of Universal at the time, and they said, you know, we'd like to help you know make this project and they brought this project to us and the project was was birthed from a really good friend of mine uh ethan long i don't mm -hmm. know you know ethan right yeah great great children's book artist and yeah we went to bring him together yeah great yeah. guy i just talked to him yesterday and he had this really fun project called uh animal justice animal justice league and so we had their you know we got together um uh paulo who was a huge part yep. of firefly uh he got involved in the story and we all got in there and greg and john and myself and we kind of worked this new property to this thing called Farm Force, and uh, we were like, okay, well, let's try and you know make a whole story in seven minutes. You can, we actually have the episode on all on 
on YouTube. And um, uh, Jeff Han yeah. was a part of that too. He came up. Jeff's great with humor. Yeah, he he's is. fantastic with well, finding. He did a lot of punch up for us. On oh Russell man, Bear. great! Yeah. And that whole know, I love do. Yes, do too. Yeah. It's so good. That was him. It's yeah. so good. He's so good. And uh, he did stuff from Brother Bear too because we yeah. worked on that. And and then I saw Jeff was working on that. Oh, right on. So so we made this pilot. It went on to Nickelodeon and it won Viewers Choice Awards. And and then I went out with the producer at the time. And uh, and we were starting to get sales, pre-sales, because that's the way television wow. worked with pre-sales. Yeah. And Disney XD, uh, Jetix, there was another one, Jetix, and you start doing pre-sales based on territories. So there's about at that time there was about 140 territories. So what you do is you do the pre-sales, and you're building up an allotment of you know we're going to pay this much if you right. get, if you deliver the show by X you'll have these pre-sales on a per episode basis. Now obviously each pre-sale in each section is not going to equal the cost of a full episode, but it's the it's the uh, the grouping of all that, you know, the the collected amount of pre-sales. Right. And so this number is going up really nicely and steadily. It's like, wow, the show's going to be great. It has to be on the air at a certain time. But you can't start production until you have a certain amount of money actually available. Right. So that became the challenge with some of the investing parties where they wanted to kind of wait for the pre-sales to get to kind of a tipping point so that they didn't have to, you know, go right. as deep. Or, yeah. And and I can understand that to a certain extent, but right. where the position I was in was very frustrating because I was in these meetings, you know, in LA and all these different places, and they're like, hey, you, you know, you, if you guys aren't ready by March of this day, of this year, that particular, we're gonna pull this pre-sales. <laughs> because, you know, I mean, I yeah. understand, they gotta go and broadcast, they yeah, gotta yeah. promote, they gotta do different things. Yeah. So ultimately, that's the reason why Farm Force didn't go on the air. And the other thing that happened at the time, there was um, there was another show that did have a bunch of funding going on, which was called um, oh gosh, it was a farm movie, and it was what the heck was that farm movie? You guys remember that farm movie? It was a Steve Odekirk film. I can't oh, remember. farm movie. Was it a movie about farming? I can't remember. I can't remember. But, farm movie. But basically, there was a, a lot movie of money. About farming. There was <laughs> I can't remember it. I can't remember it. it was I, something I something no to do idea. with a cow. Yeah, but yeah. Um, no. uh, I didn't see the film. But basically, it had gotten a bunch of, you know, it had, like, successful funding. They, you know, they made a $50 million feature of it. Yeah. And uh, so that, too, I think, took some steam out of one of our big... Uh, you, know, well. you know, post-Disney, we've learned so yeah. much. Oh, my you know, we were, we were in such a bubble working at Disney yeah. and, um, and how the world really worked. I mean, yeah. we were, Disney protected us... For you know, it was a good thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I I loved working there, and I loved the people there, and I loved the executives I worked for, most of them, and uh, and and they did such a great job at just protecting us from all that stuff yeah. from the rest of the world. Uh, and it was after Disney that you go out into the real world, and you go, oh my gosh, this is how it's really done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, when I mean, you don't have the money, when you don't have the deep pockets of Disney, it's a whole different world. Oh yeah, yeah. You start pulling the curtain back, and, and you know, you, you get in there. Yeah, I'll, it's really tough to get anything off the ground. I'll yeah. tell you a funny little story, and I've I've told this story to some of my colleagues, and and uh, it ends really good because he became he became a good friend of mine, and and uh, would send me like bottles of wine at Christmas stuff like that, but yeah. Uh, so we were doing some larger productions uh, a few years back, a bunch of years back, and um, I had uh, an LA team come to from a large studio mm -hmm. came over and it was one of the finance people, and you know I I've had to learn to deal with spreadsheets and finance and you know yeah. not a not a place that I like to be in. Right. I know it and I have to know it and navigate it. But in this one particular instance was an interesting outside of Disney story that I would never find myself. I'm in a conference room my conference room here in Florida and uh, and the f head of finance comes out and they wanted us to take a lot more of a particular project and I said no we can't take more because it could break the team and they said well but look how much more you know because they just see it as well look how much more work you'll get but more work doesn't necessarily mean more money right it's just more headache yeah and the last thing you want to do is burn anybody these are these are our friends right, right, right. we've worked with them forever and and it's more important that you, as as an entity or an artist or whatever, can continue on and enjoy what you're doing, right? As opposed to, oh, I'm going to do this just because of the money, and it's going to be miserable, and everybody that works for me is going to hate me, <laughs> and I'll never work with them again. I mean, you know, it's a no-brainer for me, right? And there's studios that'll do that. Oh, I don't even want. Yeah. I don't know how far I'm. I'm going to be careful what yeah. I say because I know <laughs> you're alive. Because yeah, I got we're live. We got stories, <laughs> but but he so he starts yelling at me like red face yelling at me in my conference room 
why can't you? They can do more. And you know, we have the same spreadsheets, but he sees that spreadsheet as numbers. Right. And I'm seeing the spreadsheet as people. I know who they are. Yeah. And I know what we can do. Yeah. And I know that this will destroy us. Yeah. And I thought for sure, my goodness, I think we lost it. You know, I'm thinking yeah. we lost it because they bleed, whatever. We wind up getting less of that project, but I was fine with it. Because <laughs> for us, it was this yeah. totally enjoyable, pleasurable experience. Exactly. And then I got Chris, Christmas cards from him, and we're all buddies. He doesn't work at that studio anymore. But, but yeah, so it, it's interesting because you say post Disney, I couldn't envision myself having that conversation. You know, it really no. heated conversation. No, I know, and yeah, I mean, yeah, about finances. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brian Johnson is asking, "Can I drive?" Brian over? Johnson. He's asking. Brian I... Johnson. <laughs> we do that one. Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson. He's asking, "Can I drive over now and buy a copy of the book?" I don't have an extra one here to we... buy. But no, no, you can't. But you can drive over. <laughs> you can drive Brian, jo Brian Johnson and I went to high school. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> we don't have an extra copy for you to buy, but you're welcome to come over and see our backyard digs. <laughs> yeah. See the Brian actually helped me build uh, build the bar. Oh, really? Yeah, when we first oh, built the bar. This is incredible. If you're going to be quarantined, this is the place you want to be quarantined at because basically there's like a party going on back there. It's, <laughs> we, tra it's, we transformed it, our backyard. It's, it's a construction party. Yeah. It's fantastic. We, we it's transformed really, really it for great. sure. It's really great. Uh, uh, what are some uh, what are some good programs to animate with? Like I know you talked about TV Paint earlier, but are there any others that you recommend? And uh, what are your thoughts on Adobe Animate? You want to answer? I don't, you know, I've never used Adobe Animate. I, I don't think it's made for what we do. It's not. It, and so I just haven't even bothered. So a lot of people ask me that. And a lot of people do, like, animation in Photoshop. And they say it's it works good. fine. It works fine. But I've, to me, once again, it's not made for that. Right. So I've just, you know, you. I, I'm a guy that, when, once I find something I like, my blinders go on, and I just stay with that, and I work with it, and that's then that's the end of the story. Yep. You turned me on to TV Paint yep. five years, six, seven years yep. ago. And I put my blinders on, and that's yeah. all I've ever done. And you know, the, the other superstar of TV Paint that really uh, opened up my eyes even more to it, we don't use it on a regular, at all, mm -hmm. but I may at, at some point, because I'm, I'm so deep in harmony. Remember when you came to the studio, and Dave Nethery, who's oh, a yeah, big, yeah. huge TV Paint guy. Genius. Yeah. Genius TV Paint guy. Yeah. Um, when he did that little demo for you and me, at that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was like, wow, this is really fantastic. But very much like you... I've been in the tomb boom mindset, yeah. and I'm like, I know where my buttons are. I yeah. know where the uncomfortable exactly. spots are. And I don't know that one's better than the other uh, yeah. for you know for what we do. Uh, but it's just you know I have nothing bad to say about tomb boom. I've yeah. just never used it. Yeah, and and the other one that uh, Ryan says he's been getting some good results with is the is it Clip Studio? Yeah, Clip, Clip Studio, Studio Paint yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, Uncle Travis says, hello, beautiful people. Yeah. Hello, hello, Uncle, Uncle Travis. Travis. I have some dirt in me. <laughs> no, I don't. YouTube question for Dom. When you have a story you want to tell but aren't sure how to tell it, a comic book, animation, book, etc., how do you go about choosing your medium? I think it goes by what's available to you. It's the reason why I launched the publishing company. You know, okay, do I have enough to do that? I don't have, you know, if I'm going to make the most lean animated film, I, I don't have $10 million laying around. I don't have $25 million, which, mm -hmm. which would be better. Or $40 million. You know, I don't know. It would be what, awesome. I know. It would be pretty awesome, right? Yeah. I'm not sure what Klaus costs, but I know they did it pretty... $40 million. Pre Yeah, as I said, it did that, pretty... Which blows my mind. Pretty lean. Yeah. Pretty lean, But right? that, I mean, that production value for $40 million, and I went to James Baxter and asked him personally. Yes. I said, James, did they really make this for $40 million? He goes, yes. And That's, I said, how did they do that? They said... We made it once. That's right. That's yeah. right. See, so you just answered it. You yeah. yeah, you just answered Sorry, it. I didn't mean to yeah. take over your No, mind. no worries. But that's exactly right. Yeah. So they're working within their parameters. Well, and I'm going to get to the answer, but, you know, we get clients sometimes that say, oh, but I want it to look like Pixar. I want it to look like this. Okay, well, Pixar is about $2 million a minute. You know? <laughs> maybe more. Literally. Yeah, maybe yeah. literally, right? Yeah. And. And it's not that uh, you know you can't do quality for less, and that's kind of what I always do. I try and say, well, what is the parameters that you have to work in? So right. let's make something great that looks amazing, appealing, and, and compelling for the parameters you work in, and you design to those parameters. Right. You don't design outside of your scope because you're going to be let down every single time. Right. You know, and and that's hard for a lot of yeah. non-animation people to, to to. But that's the brilliance comprehend. of what you just said. Know your range. Know your know your limits, and design within those limits. And it's going to force you to be more creative. It's going to exactly. force you to 
to you know when the sky's the limit then the sky's the limit and you're going to be all over the place yeah exactly and, uh, uh, yeah so that's a, exactly. it's a really great piece so I think that's the answer where yeah. it's like is it a comic like it may be a feature film but do you have time now to just make a 16 page comic version yeah why not yeah exactly yeah, so. good point uh, Alice Alice's Gian YouTube asks hi Dom I'm, uh, I'm just checking out the Premise Entertainment website and it's, it looks amazing I've noticed that there are also life drawing workshops too. Will you continue after world? Will you continue these after the world becomes normalized? It's a great question because um, there is no. Um, um, I don't know what normal is anymore. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, so it's about adapting, right? Yeah. And uh, I think we were just talking about this. Yeah. At lunch. They'll have nude models as long as they wear a face mask. <laughs> <laughs> well, not in my house. <laughs> So I have a I have a I have a partner uh, John uh, who's a great guy and we have this thing called Creative Key which is a workshop space where we would do a lot of classes and workshops and things like that. Yeah. So we would do we you know you you would come to a bunch of our when we were at the other studio yeah. you, would you would come Aaron would make the drive to life drawing this is how dedicated this guy is he would make the drive to our life drawing. Uh, Secret art club meetups. Yeah. Where basically, you know, we'd only get about a dozen people, maybe yeah. you know, ten, a dozen people. But it, but it was important for me to keep that tradition going, literally since college, since Disney, where it's like, let's stay sharp, let's be creative, let's just sit down and do quick sketching. You know, yeah. the art. There's a there's so much importance about quick sketching from your from a library mindset of building up assets and, and understanding. You know, the way Dustin's foot is curling right now versus yeah. your foot. You know, the so I do it as a regular practice for people I work with and so from friends that come right, you know right. we've, got, we've got kind of like a little core team and this, this, one, of our, one of our friends Giselle she always she tease us that it's a secret art club and, and uh, because you know we don't promote a lot of stuff and right. you know I'm not a big promoter at all I'm horrible with it actually that's, uh, that's why our YouTube channel is like nothing on it but <laughs> but what I did start doing and uh, because of this this environment when you say adapting instead of I thought it would be important to keep the class going, so since we can't do it physically together, what I did was, every other week, I've got two sons quarantined with me, and they've been kind enough to be models. Oh, yeah? And my yeah. wife, my wife, you know, she's got some costumes, because she's from that world, uh -huh. and um, and the last, we've, we've, we've done it for the last uh, four weeks, we'll have an open session, so, so where we would normally get like eight or nine people show up, now we have like... You know, 70, 80 people show up free of charge. <laughs> it's awesome. Come sketch with us, and yeah. it's, you know, we talk to each other. So it's a way to try and find. You've got about a thousand people watching right now that'll be. That well, come on over. Do. We'll be back. We do it every other Wednesday night at 7 p.m. The next one is going to be steampunk themed. How do they find it? Uh, it's on our it's on our YouTube channel. Oh, and it's on the YouTube. Yeah, channel. it's on the YouTube channel, and, and also okay, yes, YouTube. it's live. Okay, gotcha. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't I don't have a Nick, a Dustin, or. Yeah. All the other secret people that, <laughs> that make the creature art teacher run, but uh, but it's on there, and you know we have a Facebook page. Okay. You know we we promote it on the Facebook page things right. like that, but that's the best way that I can see it going forward. You know when we do have an open workshop, it'll be yeah. on the website saying, "Hey, we'll be back at that's this great. location." So, that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Uh, a couple of people are um, you're talking about the movie that you guys are trying to figure out, the one that's on the farm. Yeah. Uh, were you guys maybe talking about the barnyard? That's it. Barnyard. Yes. That's it. Yep. Nailed that's it. One. There you go. Because other people were uh, were asking, like, are you talking about the cows at Disney? Was that Home of no, the Range? No, 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 no. But bu the barnyard. Which, y I'm sure you probably talked about it. The film that I would have loved to have seen Disney make was Sweating Bullets. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That was Home on the Range. Which fine. became Home on the Range. Yeah. So uh, we got nothing on this end. We might be. Uh, we've been at it for an hour and seventeen. We got, we got to look at some stuff. Yeah, on we here. can show some more. I'd yeah. like to show how. Um, how. And uh, uh, Austin actually has a uh, question for you, Dad. <laughs> yes. Uh, can we and your granddaughter come over tonight? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a book for your granddaughter. Oh yes! All right. And I apologize, I don't have a bunch of extra special editions, but they are becoming available. Okay, tell me what you want me to do. All right, so go to the 40, the one I was showing you, I think it was like 42, 43. 42, 43. 40, what is it, 40? Do you want the black and white? Yeah, go black and white first. Okay, so like, this gives you a good idea. Hold on, don't don't switch it over okay. yet. Okay. Sorry. 
There we go. Okay, go ahead. So this gives you a good idea of like, you know, how I wanted to try and find fun ways of doing visual storytelling and, you know, doing a book, taking a, a movie version into a book is a, is, a, is a big challenge when you have a lot of characters and you've got an action scene and, um, and you want to try and find creative ways of even vignetting things. And, you know, I, I would always go back to the old books of the past and, and how they would make it all really kind of cool and interesting, even in its shapes. So I would do layouts like this, and I try and get the light sources as much as possible uh, before turning it over to Ryan, who would, he's just amazing with color and paint and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's kind of how we attack these. And honestly, it's the only way I could have gotten it done because I'm not a fast artist at all. Do you want me to switch over? Yeah, you can switch the color, and you can switch in between. You can see kind of how we, yeah. you know, how we work together. That's you know? pretty darn cool. I mean, it's pretty exact. But then there's other ones that are not like that. Like if you go to your page, uh, actually, I could show you your your little layout page. Oh, mate, I hope it's on it. Uh, see if it's eleven. See what ten eleven looks like. Black and white. Uh, I hope so. I hope Let me so. see. Yeah. It. Oh, that's no, color. No, it's not totally that. I saw a picture of me. Yeah, it may not be on it. Go to the other one. Then go to the one that you just had. Had the picture of you. All right. So what happened here was this this page. You, you <laughs> came much later. That's what happened. You came much later because oh, gotcha. you, you weren't designed for this page, so I don't have the layout for this one. But again, you could see kind of like, you know, that's the way I would turn things over to him sometimes. But but then there's other times, if you go to page one, you'll see it's not as finished out. You yeah, know, so, so there's a correct. lot more information that, he, you know, and, but he and I, are, we're, we can think, you know, it's like those things when someone else can finish a sentence. Yeah. Like, you know, even though we're working remotely right now, he's, he's art directing um, a, a film that I'm working on right now. And, you know, he gets it. You know, I was yeah. on my way over here and I did, wasn't able to share stuff. He gets it. You know, same thing with Robbie, Enoch, anybody. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the importance of having a good tight knit team. That's how Nick and I are. That's how Chuck and yeah. I were. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. And what's really neat about the age that we're in now, you know, technically, We've been working remote since 2004. Yeah, we have. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, I'm trying to look at glass half full of every situation. Exactly. And the neat thing is that now there's, there's a couple of large projects that we're talking about with some producers and the beauty is they're calling me from their kitchen. <laughs> so suddenly things that they were concerned about are now things that have to be embraced. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, it's kind of interesting that, and I think you can do it. It's just a little bit more challenging when you, it's with people you don't really know because of whether it's security reasons or just the aspect of it be much easier to explain what we need in this shot yeah. if I was sitting there versus, you know, through Slack or texting or typing or, you know, Zoom, stuff whatever. like that. Yeah. But, but we're adapting and it's working. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's not working. It's working. Exactly. It's just that we're trying to find what's the right way for this. And what's the, yeah, it, it's the, the, it's the save, is there any, well, first of all, if there is monetary savings, is it enough to justify the extra little bit of difficulty that you might be right. having and all right. that kind of stuff. Uh, Facebook question. Hi, guys. Mr. Corolla. I've been trying to get in touch with you for a while. Uh-oh. <laughs> for a while now. I don't by, by any chance, is Premise planning to hire any animators anytime in the near future? Okay, so... Um, with the, which brings me to another yeah. thing I want to bring. But go ahead. I'll, I'll bring it up. Okay. Do you remember? Yes, I will. Okay. Are you sure about that? <laughs> So we, we maintain a small core team. Uh, that team does fluctuate. And what happened was, this was around 2008, 2009, um, in order to move the business forward, we had to, you, we couldn't just hold everybody. Right. Just, you know, from, from a real estate standpoint, from an overhead standpoint, just couldn't. So we adapted to that, and it's been really neat in some ways because I'm still working with the same people, but you're not forcing them to do something that they're not comfortable with or it's not their skill set. Right. Uh, and as far as the future goes, there there were, are, I don't know, in this pre-COVID world we live in, I don't know what's going to happen, but there are projects that are tracking. But I'm always hesitant to share, hey guys, we need this big team, you know, in July of 2020. Like, I'm always hesitant to do that because life changes. Life changes. Yeah, they, well, especially in the industry that we're it, in. Too. It, yeah, not so, just life that we've been experiencing, but right, the industry is right. even more volatile. So I'll keep it very, very narrow and, and go to some people and say, listen, this is potentially what's brewing. It's almost like preparing for a storm. Right. I can't tell everybody yet because I don't know if it doesn't happen. You don't want to get you don't want to be that guy that's always ringing a bell. Yeah, and, and nothing it, happens. Nothing happens. Right. So uh, yes, it's possible right now. No. 
Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Which, but I would love to connect if they want to connect in some way. Yeah. Because I'm all about finding new talent. Which brings me, you know, um, you're a wonderful studio. It's an amazing yeah. studio, what you guys do. It's small. You're not Pixar. You're not no. Disney. You're not DreamWorks. You're, you know, mm -mm. you're a small fish in that, in that yeah. ocean. Yeah. And there's so many... Uh, there's so many young people that I meet. It doesn't matter if we're in Chile or Japan or Mexico City or Denmark. Um, you know, there's always somebody there that they have, they, they've got to work for Pixar. They've got to work for Disney. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do if I can't get into Disney. Yeah. And um, it's sort of like American Idol. This is my last chance, yeah. man. They're 16 years old. Yeah. <laughs> this is my last yeah. chance. And, uh, <laughs> awesome. but, but, um, and I, and I, I always try to explain to them that you know if you want to go for those studios and that's great you can go for them. But there's a lot more people out there. There's a lot more yeah. studios out there. There's Premise Entertainment. Yeah. There's and I've used you as an example yeah. to these people. There's a lot of stuff out there that you don't even know exists. Yeah. And so you know keeping, I, I, I don't know if I'm asking a question or if I'm just making a statement. But the point I'm trying to make is, um, you know, there rather than you know casting such a small net for you know that the odds of getting into a Pixar or a Disney or a DreamWorks or or, or whatever it might be, Blue Sky, are tiny. It's really it's yeah. it's tough to do. Um, do you have a do you have a, a, a I do a, 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 an opinion on that? I I do. It might be long winded, but I'll give you right. an actual example. Yeah. So there was a project in two thousand and ten, two thousand and nine. I can't remember. It was a small project. Didn't have much of a budget. Not not very well known. And the producer came to me and said, "Listen, I." I I have to, I can only uh, get some kids out of full cell and um, can you help with this project but the project had a lot of meaning and purpose behind it right. so that's what got my heart and I was like okay let me see so I worked with these with this young crew and they did about seven episodes and if you see the, the first episode to the seventh episode you're like these can't be the same people wow they really grew they grew like crazy and not only that the really cool thing was you know, one of them went on to become an animator at Blue Sky. Another one's a senior rigger now over at EA. Yeah. So you don't know with those little studio opportunities what can come out of it. Right. And in some cases, you know, you may just love that environment because maybe you are someone that could wear a lot of hats. Yeah. You know, the, the, core, the core team that I tend to work with a lot are people that wear, oh my gosh, you know, they're switching from a story hat to, you know, a CG hat. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're switching, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and there's definitely value in that. And you can learn a lot. It's not bad to have a goal to work for a big studio. That was my, you know, I wanted to be a Disney animator. And right. Thank God, but you know, I became a Disney animator. But if it doesn't happen, that doesn't mean that you can't have this amazing career that could be even more fulfilling. I would never dream that my post Disney years. And again, I love Disney. Yeah. I mean, I've got it. It's yeah. in the vein. Yeah. But my post Disney years are far more rewarding. Yeah, and it's hard for me to even say that. I know it's, it's that's all. I, I completely agree. It's part it's, of the lecture that I give about, you know, the persistence of vision, having yeah. having this persistent vision of wanting to be an artist, and how great Disney was, but how much yeah. happier I am now yeah. and fulfilled as an yeah. artist. Yeah. And for me, the growth of me as an artist, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I see you, and you. I don't know how you do these paintings in two hours. I'm a very <laughs> slow artist. Uh, my colleagues say I'm not, but I think I am. Um, maybe every artist thinks that, but. I see my growth from when I was at Disney, and I'm like, how did I spend almost 12 years at Disney? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know uh, it's like, you know, it's just, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm teasing, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I, but you're pretty self-deprecating, though, too. So, yeah, but, but, no, but you're you're know what I'm saying. Artist. It's like, yeah. you know, the, the, the growth of it is, is exponential when you, when you have multiple opportunities. I'll give you another really great, uh, great story. Ron Covey, you know Ron. Yeah, uh -huh. Ron's been a friend of mine since CalArts. And uh, at Disney, he was a cleanup artist. And everybody probably knows what a cleanup artist is. Yeah. And well, the cleanup artist, for those of you that don't know, they don't take out the trash. A cleanup artist is a person that redraws the rough animation uh, that the animators draw. So they, those are the actual drawings that you would see up on the screen are the cleanup artist drawings. Yeah. And Ron was, a, he's always been an amazing artist. And I think he works for a DDG or it's WDI now. I think, is it? WDI? I think, yeah. So, um, so. He had come out of Disney cleanup, and we had just started our company, and I knew how great Ron was in college, you know, and I said, uh, we needed some extra animators for Curious George at the time, and, um, and Ron jumped in, and he's like, well, I don't know if I, I, don't know if I can, yeah. I said, Ron, I said, you did this in college, I said, you were great, he did some great scenes in Curious George, 
<laughs> so then we started doing a bunch of direct to DVDs, a lot of story work. And uh, I said, Ron, I said, we need more storyboard artists. And, you know, his drawings are amazing. Yeah. The beautiful little Disney, yeah. quintessential Disney storybook yeah. drawings. And uh, he's like, oh, I don't, you know, and Ron's so humble. He's like, I don't know. I don't know that. I said, Ron, you could do it. He did phenomenal. Uh, he, you know, so it's neat to see when you're in a small studio, you have additional opportunities. Stepping up. That you may never see in a right. big studio. Yeah. You know, and I felt, I, you know, you know this part better than anybody. In animation, you know, we were character animators. We were having a blast. Everything was great. It was a lot of hard work. You get an assignment on Monday. You got a show on Friday. If this guy's not happy with it, son of a gun, now we got to go back. You know. It's that type of thing. It's right. a lot of pressure. And it was a small group. What did we have? 30 animators, maybe? Yeah. You know? Like 35. Yeah. 35. And we knew how many people wanted to be animators. Exactly. And it and it's not that they couldn't have been. There just wasn't room. Yeah, they were waiting for someone to die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? and, and so you don't want to be in that situation either. Yeah. Because you could be missing out on, on this amazing opportunity. Yeah. And it, it you, know, that, you know, but I love, especially young people coming out now, I, I, I try to... It's nice to specialize, but I always try to get people to be more generalist too, because it really does open up a lot of opportunity to at least get your foot in the door to a studio, and then yeah. you know find your way. Along or not know that you're really good at something else that you didn't even know existed. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, question for you both. I assume over time, uh, over time was widespread at Disney even more than now. How uh, how deal with it when you are a passionate worker but also want a family too? How do you deal with it? Uh, when you're a passionate work and also want a family too. Um, you know what? It, certain departments had more overtime issues than others. I think cleanup probably had the most overtime. It was the most expensive department uh, in, in the, uh, through the process of making an animated movie. As an animator, if you really buckled down, and Mark Hedda is a perfect example of this. If you really buckled down and didn't play darts, yeah. or at least didn't play darts. <laughs> or James Bond. <laughs> or James Bond. <laughs> but, I mean, if you really sat down and focused, um, you know, I never did more than 20 or 30 hours of overtime, even in crunch periods, and in heavy crunch periods, and I never, and I didn't do it that often. So I never really had, you know, in the early days when I was trying to, you know, become an animator and get my foot in the door and just kind of be noticed... I probably worked a, a few extra hours, uh, but all in all, um, you know, I, I think, you know, I focused on work when it was time to work, and then I focused on yeah. family when it was yeah. time to be home, and, yeah. and we really didn't have too much conflict, and Disney was really great about bringing the families oh in. Oh my gosh. That's one of the things I loved yeah. about Disney, is that when we were in overtime, our family could come in, we'd have dinner together, yeah. they were always wonderful about that. Yeah. I remember that, and also the bring your child to work days were yeah. 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 <laughs> I think that was one of the reasons why, like, even, even I wasn't even married at the time, when Lion King was kind of, uh, it was... It was before we finished Lion King, and Frank Gladstone was like, oh, you know, you guys want to stay here or go back, whatever it may have been. But the Florida studio, I didn't even have a family, but you felt this great camaraderie. Yeah. That uh, I, I just... To this day, know, it's the warmest studio I was just going to say, I, I don't know if it existed. Matter of fact, I remember a guy from ILM that had come down, he was one of the senior guys, and he said that he had never seen a studio like that. Yeah. Because it was just like, you know, you know the people, you know who they got married to, you went to their birthday parties. You yeah. Know, and... And I think in some d some way we still ha have that. It's like we, oh no, we still do. I mean, we're, I mean, we're friends with, we're all still friends spread out all over the world, yeah. and we're getting to the age now where some of us are passing, and it's yeah. heart wrenching, and it's yeah, it's really. Um, and then you, you know, but we're also seeing each other, and, and you catch up to where you you were three five years ago yeah. when you hadn't seen each other, and you know when we did Bear in the Hair, yeah, it was it was all people, it was all Disney oh, people, man, and it was like this magical time. It was a magical yeah. summer because all of a sudden it was a reunion, yeah. and. We were getting paid for, but yes. it was just like a fun yes. laughing and yep. giggling, and yeah, it's a man. Blast. It just was a highlight of my career yeah. making that. Yeah, and isn't that the world of difference? And I'm sure you probably have talked about this at some point or not, but having the right people be yeah. a part of a project, world of difference than having somebody that you know they may be super talented, but for whatever reason, it becomes poison. Yeah, it does. You know, and yeah. and especially as we get older. I think I appreciate the, those moments more than ever where it's just like, you know what, I'd much rather work with people that I absolutely love and adore and have a blast with, even if it's harder, yeah. or, you know, than being something miserable, yeah. you know, it's just, I agree. it's just not something you want to get involved in. Uh, YouTube question, along those lines, do you have any tips for getting into the industry as an amateur? As an amateur, yeah. 
a mature? Uh, I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, I've been out of that part of the world for so long. Uh, I don't know that it's changed a whole lot other than putting your, you know, putting the best work together that you have and getting it out there. You know, as an amateur, though, you want to make sure that the work you're you're pulling together that you want to get into the industry with is going to be at least on competitive level with the people that are already there. And it doesn't have to be, you know, it's not, I'm not talking about Disney, DreamWorks, and Pixar. Um, I'm just talking about the field in general because the field in general is is pretty professional. And so you just want to make sure that your work is, is to that standard. Uh, other than that, I don't know that yeah. there's much I can... Comment. Yeah, no, it, it's it's kind of like whenever somebody says, you know, well, uh, I've got a certain style, I don't know where I fit, and whatever it may be, and I think it's just, you just have to keep producing work, and yeah. try and find, like, you know, how much work can you do that maybe catches some interest by a group, or, you yeah. know, at Disney was always about the quick sketching, you know, all yeah. that was always quick sketching, quick sketching, you know, and, and trying to get the figure down, and race and put your portfolios together, and, you yeah. know, um, uh, oh, I just remember, you know, Tony Stanley was also in that uh, oh yeah, he yeah. Joined. He, you know what it was? He wasn't at CalArts at the time, but I think he, he, he joined us too in that in that training program. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he was just. I just had him not on the show, but I yeah. got to get him on the show. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If, uh, you might know what this means. Do you send tests out? Uh, we have in the past. Uh, we're we're not right now. We have in the past for uh for backgrounds actually. Oh, I see. Yeah. Send tests out yeah. for. for uh, that's where I'm. I'm yeah, assuming I'm assuming that. that is. Yeah, that, that, what does it mean to send send out tests? Like, is it just if like someone's a, if someone's uh, wants to interview for a job uh, and they, they want to show their their talent, you send them a test. You show say, yeah. hey, I want you to paint this background for yeah. me, or I want you to animate this shot for me. Oh, okay. I don't always agree with that kind of stuff. Hours were paid. Oh well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. If if you pay for it, then yeah. see a lot of now people don't pay for it. we didn't. It wasn't paid to this to the extent of a professional level. No, I got you. But it was just so that at least there's some compensation. Yeah, there was an exchange where it's like, yeah, hey, listen, that's good. if you want to choose to do this, this is what we can offer for this. Yeah. But it's not, yeah, you because know, it's not, it's not something that we pursued. It's I, something that they pursued. Just us. the fact that you said yeah. you pay it, then yeah, yeah, because yeah. you know the it was a, it was a nominal amount. But again, yeah. I'm always thinking as an artist yeah. first. Yeah. Before. Yeah, because there's a lot of studios yeah. out there that say, "Hey, we want you to do this test, and we want you know, and that might be a whole big storyboard test that might take, yeah, crazy. you know, three weeks to do it, and they don't pay for it. Yeah. And they and then you spend three weeks doing it, you send yeah. it, and they go, ah, yeah, we'll pass. Yeah. You know, and it's just it's just not ethically yeah. right. Yeah. No. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, Twitch comment. Curious George was the first movie I took my three year old to uh, son to see. He was so enthralled. That movie has a special place in my heart. Mine too. And, uh, and Nick adds his three-year-old son loves it as well. So uh, that's Rivers. Rivers loves it as well. That's awesome. Well, a good, a big chunk of it was done right here in the back lot of Universal Studios yep, Orlando. It was. I yeah. remember when you guys were doing yeah, it. Yeah, we had a blast doing it too. And, and again, that was a neat opportunity because, again, you have a bunch of artists trying to start a studio. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they've got this, they've got a big chunk of a main movie. Yeah. And... We got to figure it out, and that was a tough one. That was a it was tough. Very movie. hard, yeah. very hard. Yeah, there is. But a you know, the 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 guy that really pulled it together, the director that came back in and pulled it together. Oh gosh, I just lost his his name. The Matt O'Callaghan. Matt O'Callaghan. Yeah. Matt was amazing. Yeah. Because you know that had a troubled history for yeah. a while, and mm -hmm. and he did not have a big window to kind of yeah. pull the, and he he was amazing, and we That's had a great, great team. Great Matt O'Callaghan did the shark in Little Mermaid. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Great that? guy, too. He animated guy. that. Yeah. Uh, how'd you come up with the name uh, Premise? Well, basically, everything starts with a premise. You know, the, the, the core of a good story has to have a good premise. So that's that's basically where it comes from. But it's always weird. It's like it, we kind of tease because sometimes we'll get phone calls and be like, is this premise? And I was like, I don't even know that word. Is that a word? And, and it happens all the time. Or premise. Yeah, it's like, what is that? Premise. I don't even know. My what shop that teacher, I mean, he, he knew me for two years, and every time he'd take Rel, it was Aaron Blassie. Is Aaron Blassie? <laughs> what is that? It's like it's Blaze. You've known me for two yeah, years. What is that? I've had, in, when I, whenever I went to school, like the, the my actual teachers would understand, oh, it was Dustin Blaze. But when the substitutes would come in, yeah. when they do roll call, they'll go Dustin Blase, Bla Blaise. Blaise. Well, Blaise. 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 So apparently it's, it's a common thing. <laughs> but yeah, so like that's Bla Blase. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> you have anything else on there? Because we'll wrap up here pretty quick. Uh, Brian Johnson saying, "On my way, great show." Oh, right on. Awesome. And uh, and Kendra Wolfer said, "Test should be paid." I think it's very good business practice. It is. It is absolutely. And uh, actually. 
it actually reminds me of working at a digital domain of having the all those weeks of uh, of training and then we had the final test at the at the end of it yeah and so it's kind of like like that right where like, yeah not the yes. class part but the actual test of like seeing what you can do yeah yeah exactly yeah, but we did it in the company yeah, yeah. see that's different yeah, yeah that's you, different. Guys, no, you guys no, are making no, a salary yeah, exactly. anyway exactly so it's really nothing like what we were talking about no, <laughs> <laughs> no it's not <laughs> <laughs> the word test is the same though. The kidding. word test is the same. <laughs> the word test. <laughs> he's, he's gonna it. <laughs> it's okay. It's good to see it live. <laughs> but one other little thing before we finish up is uh, this is a strange time. Yeah. But Definitely. It, it is a great time to be creative. It is. It is probably the most amazing time to be creative. I, th I, I couldn't agree with you more. I agree with you a thousand percent. Yeah. It really is. And so, who, you know, you, you have a, a big audience and a young audience, and uh, they should treasure this time and take that moment out to be, you know, oh, I want to do that comic book. Or I want do it do now. Do it. <laughs> do it now. And it may, not, it may not be a seed that grows until who knows when. I wrote the Tiki Trouble Treatment uh, end of 2007. Wow. Uh, and it's 2020. Yeah. And I finally scratched the itch of getting it out in some fashion. <laughs> that's great. So I know that sounds horrible. Yeah. But, you know, there's work and everything else. But what I'm saying is, how many projects yeah. do we have? Do you have? Do I have? Right. Where Tons. they've been with me since I was a teenager. Yep. And those are little dreams and whispers that came to you. And uh, not to get too deep about this, but you have to get them out because once we're not here, they're not here anymore. They're gone. And the world never saw that dream. The yeah. world never read that story. They never, they never got inspired by this. They were never uplifted by that. And, you know, uh, we were talking at lunch. You know, this is such an important time to add positivity into the world. You know, it, I, I love SGN. It's the only news I'm watching right now. Yeah. It's John yeah. Krasinski. <laughs> yeah. you know, so it's like, be news. creative. You'll get your mind off of things. And uh, just, just, a one do just, just, <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah, because, I mean, that's another question I get so often is like, what is, is you know, how, how do you, how do you deal with lack of motivation? Yeah. How do you, it's like, I've never, I've never have lack of motivation. You just got to do it. You just get out there and, and just start producing. You know, we were saying that, you know, if you come out of this, uh, this whole quarantine thing and you don't know another language or you haven't, you haven't yeah. built a, a house in your backyard or you haven't, you know, created a lot of art, then your excuse was never, I never had enough time. Right. Okay. Right. So, and that's uh, one thing we don't all have. Exactly. At some point, we don't all have enough. Exactly. Time. The so clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. The clock is always ticking. Yeah, absolutely. So. And uh, somebody asked this earlier, and I feel that it would not be this stream would not be complete without it. But have you ever used voice recognition technology in a lift in Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> he's do, you know he's, what he's, do you know what he's referring to? No. He's always, he's always doing this All right. thing. His voice is amazing. So somebody always asks that question ever since I brought that up. Oh my gosh, his voice is incredible. What's the smallest amount of people in a studio team you've worked with? Four. Well, there you go. Four. Four. There's your, that's pretty small. Yeah. <laughs> that's really small. Yeah. Does the location you live in affect the chances of getting into a studio? That's a great question. You go first. I, you know what? If you'd asked me that two months ago, yeah. <laughs> I would have said yes yeah. to a certain degree because I do think sh things are shifting. And a lot more people are at the time, even two months ago, were starting to work from home. And because uh, I was getting this question a lot from when we'd go down to Mexico, Latin America, whether you know Brazil, Colombia, uh, uh, Chile, um, people you know would ask me, "Hey, do I need to move to Los Angeles?" And I don't. You know, I think we were getting to a time where I was saying, you know, you, I don't think you really have to. And I think you can do stuff on your own where you're at, but you can also work remotely around the world. Now, I, I really think people are going to start working from home much more now. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, just Absolutely. crazy amounts. And, and I was talking to some of my buddies uh, over at Disney and, you know, they had a hiccup. But they're they're cranking. Yep. They're still cranking, and Animation's they're doing it all from booming. home. Yeah. yeah, it's booming right now. Yeah, and I just saw a thing on the BBC uh, where they are covering animation in in the in the UK, mm -hmm. and it's booming. Yes. You know, yeah. As, as, getting the, incentives and yeah, funding. yeah. I'm, I'm talking about specifically they're covering animation in the UK during the whole coronavirus right. lockdown. Right. And everyone's working from home. Obviously, people miss 
the face-to-face -face interaction uh, uh, that you get, or the, the, the real interaction that yeah. you get, rather than Zoom meetings. Right. But as far as working, people are people are doing it. Absolutely. And matter of fact, if anything, because um, my last eighteen months, you know, we had some loss and some tragedy, yeah. and I had to work a lot more yeah. from home. Yeah. And I had to set up my home. I upgraded this, upgraded a whole bunch of things, and uh, but now I've really. I kind of love working at home. Yeah, you know, I do. I do miss things like this, obviously, yeah. or a social lunch or something like that, or yeah. or having you know Robbie come to the house or Ryan or whoever come. I do miss certain things. Yeah. But I would definitely say, in a world of pros and cons, I'm going with the pros. And here's another thing I, I I talk about a lot with with my little circle. You know, if you're able to work at home and you're successful, you're able to work at home. Your your client or your boss is okay with you working at home. You're doing well. Why can't we stay at home? To and now I'm not saying to avoid people. Yeah. I'm just saying that's got to be at least 25 percent of traffic off the road. No, I'm telling you. That's got to be. There, I just there's so many here. rippling effects. It's fantastic. Yeah. I drove here no problem. It was great. No traffic. How many less DUIs are out there? How there, many we less? we would lose. I I because right. I look at these stats and somebody would probably check and say you're wrong, Dom. We would lose 3,300 people a day to car accidents. Yeah. That's a huge number. Yeah. I guarantee you, we're not at those numbers right now. Nope. Now, granted, we have a whole another horror no, going of course, on. Of course, but what I'm saying is, but if those became practice, yeah, yeah. Th this horror that we're going through is forcing us to, to, to into practices that we can continue to practice once we come out of the horror. Absolutely, so that's what we're saying. Uh, and, yeah. and it's bringing. I, I mean, I'm sure you obviously have it here with this incredible compound you're building, but it also <laughs> it also brings. I think your relationships a lot tighter. Yeah, you know, it's like even though we're like. And I hate the term social distancing. There was a there was an actress I saw on, on a news chat cast. She's like, it's really physical distancing that yeah. we're suffering from, you yeah. know. But in reality, it's like I'm closer with my boys right now. I'm loving it. Yeah. My wife, my you know, we go for walks. All of a sudden, my neighborhood's crowded. Granted, I got a serpentine around a lot of people, <laughs> but still, it's like yeah. you know, it's like Andy Griffith days. It is. Like, it really is. It's really. We, we, uh, Vedanta and I were saying the same thing. We drive down the road and you just see people walking now. It's great. I love it. Uh, uh, so that covers everything we have there. Do you uh, have you both been trained in uh, animation at Disney, and how was the training for that? If you did, were you, were you exactly both trained? We were just, you must be a latecomer because we've yeah, been talking definitely. about that for two hours. <laughs> definitely a latecomer. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, uh, Dom and I both were at Disney. Uh, we Dom were, and I have known each other for 26, 26 years. Ninety three. Ninety three. Yeah. But uh, what, what was the, the training like for? for well, my I was in the very beginning. first internship where they went outside of where they went outside of uh, animation schools. They had they had had internships before that, but they were just pulling from Cal Arts and and Sheridan, yeah. I think. Um, and it was the first time that they had ever gone outside of an animation school. This was in 1988, and uh, tried to recruit people that had a strong foundation in drawing and painting, and see if they could teach them animation. Mm -hmm. Now, I was very lucky. So I, 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 first of all, I was one of eight across the country that got picked for this first internship. But then on top of it, I was mentored by Glenn Keane. And so he became my mentor. And for those of you who don't know Glenn Keane, he's probably one of the best contemporary animators Amazing. out there. Him, Amazing. James Baxter, Andreas Sheja, you know, there's, a, there's a, a bunch of guys that are just at the top of their level. And Glenn is just one of those guys. He just got the Oscar last year with Kobe Bryant for Deer Basketball. Uh, animated short that he did but he was my mentor and he has a way of instilling passion mm -hmm. into anybody that he takes under his wing everyone just kind of grows and so my internship was only six weeks and I had never I knew nothing about animation I was an illustrator but within six weeks Glenn had taught me enough and I had soaked up enough from him that I was I got hired for the studio with six Amazing. weeks of animation training. Amazing. So yes, we. Yeah. So that's a long-winded answer of saying yes. We learned on the on the job. Yeah. You were already animating when uh, you. Came well, in. I came out through Cal Arts was an animation yeah. program, and we had some great teachers there. You know, we would have people pop in, like you know, Chris Buck and Brad mm -hmm. Bird. You know, it was really amazing people that would, that they had yeah. access to, um, and it was all fantastic. And actually, I'll tell you a funny. My funny little first time I met Glenn Keane. I didn't have the great experience you had in being trained under him. But uh, my roommate at the time, Weber, John Weber, uh, we were in Chenard Hall, and we had met a fella uh, at a local church there, whatever. And he's like, oh, he's like a guy I go to church with. Uh, he's a he's an anime. I think he does what you guys want to do. I was like, oh, really? I said, what's his name? Like, uh, Glenn Keane. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, he'd love to come and give you guys, like, you know, inspiration and come down to the dorm. I was like, great. 
So all of a sudden, uh, Glenn shows up in our dorm room in Chenard Hall, and uh, and the next day we didn't you know we didn't tell everybody because it was like this you know I didn't really know kind of like you know yeah. and stuff. So so the next day we were we're in the animation uh, department at Cal Arts and everybody's saying. Glenn Keane was spotted in Chenard Hall last night. <laughs> Glenn Keane was spotted there. It was kind of funny because it was the first time I guess he had gone back in like 15 years. Yeah. Because he hadn't been there in a long time. But that was, a, yeah. that was the first time I met him and he's just an incredible guy. Yeah, within our world of animation, you know, spotting Glenn Keane is like seeing Michael Jackson. You know, yeah. it's just like, he's, he's just the yeah. biggest, at the time, yeah. biggest star. Definitely. So, uh, does Dom have any funny stories of Aaron meeting Walt Disney? <laughs> I hate you, <laughs> whoever you are. That ass. That's that. awesome. <laughs> yeah, you probably get the same ones. Like, how do you draw? How do you think? No, no. It's always uh, what the, people ask me. What was it like uh, when you funny. met Walt Disney? I was like, how old do you think I am? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> well, I was dead like, before I was born. You look like you're ninety-five. <laughs> <laughs> now it would be cooler if you're getting that from the different people. Well, it, well that, that's what it, it was happening a lot. And that's it, pretty I funny. tell the other story when I. My first trip down to Chile, I was giving this talk, and there's this older guy that was with us, and I'm walking along, and I think I, at the time I was like 43 or 45, and the guy goes, we're walking along, he goes, how old are you, 57, 58, how old are you? <laughs> Shut up, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh my Let gosh. me answer first. <laughs> it's brutal. It was funny. Yeah, it's brutal. Well, anyway, uh, we should probably wrap it up. Do you have yeah. any one last question on your, on your end? Um... Nothing here, but I actually have my, I do have my own question, okay. because um, I know that when, when you, when you started out, you, they out branched to uh, find people like you that have an artistic background to learn to animate inside the studio. Right. And when we joined Digital, when you joined Digital Domain, uh, you guys had that same kind of project of bringing people in and that new them. computer technology, but didn't quite... Uh, there were people in there that did have an artistic background, but right. knew computer work. Right. And it was a mix between those with people that knew visual effects. You were one of them. And I was one of them. Yeah. And um, was that was that the same premise idea? Like, were, were you one of the guys that brought that idea to the to the floor, or was that something they had the idea of already when they when they moved? We in? knew that what you guys would be doing it could be taught, mm -hmm. and um, and so we thought if we could do a local search for people that had you know, the basic knowledge to start with, then we could teach them what they needed to know. I didn't know the stuff that you needed to learn. That was a different division, you know, the 3D technology yeah. and all that kind of yeah, stuff. The, and the 3D part came in later, af after the, the yeah. visual effects yeah. uh, school started. Exactly. And it just kind of transformed into so, that instead. But learning, but learning the visual effects and learning all that, that's, it was all stuff that we... For the, for the kind of stuff that we were doing at the time as a studio, mm -hmm. outside of the animation division that we had, we knew it could be taught and we could teach it locally. And so mm -hmm. and we, it was it was our way, we, we uh, the way, I keep saying we, it wasn't, it wasn't we, it was the, the deal that was made with the city of Port St. Lucie and all that, with everything that was being granted to our studio, we were obligated to try to pull in and give local jobs and so we were able to and it, it turned out to be really successful yeah. because we brought in a lot of local people and and they trained and they they i i was a little bit skeptical being the snob that i am thinking it was you know <laughs> what we do is a lot more specialized <laughs> and uh but it, it, were, it really worked out and the yeah. people that came in worked really hard and we were able to give jobs to a lot of local people doing awesome. a very specialized yeah. thing. You touch on a really good a really good point too because I work with a lot of young artists as well and um, and their CG like right now we're doing a lot of work with some CG folks mm -hmm. and um, it's always important even if you're not a good artist and you can't really say oh I don't really draw well whatever but if you're a CG animator I've always found that it's a lot easier for them to communicate their ideas because they're able to do a little thumbnail. Yeah. Or they're able to do a little a little sketch or something. It's much quicker and better than spending a couple of days on posing something out that is you well, let, let me show you what I'm thinking. Yeah. And you know you know, if you're able to just communicate a really quick little idea as a sketch, yeah. it's always important as a fundamental uh, you know, whether you're doing stop motion, hologram anime, whatever it is, yeah. whatever the future is it's great to hear that you were doing you were doing that at digital domain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's great to hear you do it because you know, of course, Pixar had Pixar. I don't know if they still have Pixar P U, Pixar University. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's a yeah. that's a whole nother thing yeah. that is really important. Because you're right, 
you can learn pro programs are always going to be changing. Yeah. Studios have proprietary programs, but if you have some really good core fundamentals, yeah, that that's a career versus a job. It is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. So, Dom Carolla, there he is. Blaze. It was <laughs> it was awesome. We had a great day. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for Tiki Peak Trouble. Thank you for being a part of it. You, you're a part of it. I'm so now. blown away. Yeah. I love yeah. it. So I love it. I yeah, can't that, wait to sit down with my yeah. granddaughter that caricature and, is insane. and my yeah. grandson. That's awesome. I'm uh, so glad you liked so. it because you never know how people. Thanks, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. I love it. Definitely. And uh, and once again, remember, you guys, uh, we have got, or actually, too, uh, uh, go over to premiseentertainment.com. Premiseentertainment.com. We've got a little YouTube channel where I have some behind the scenes drawing yeah. of how we got these pages made. Um, yeah. Plus, or you're doing. Trouble.com. Yeah. No, or TikiTrouble.com as, as well. Yeah. And then uh, going over to the YouTube channel also, if you want to. Uh, I don't know, when is your next. Uh, uh, drawing, uh, next. Drawing not session? this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. I don't know what date that is. Okay. Because well, dates don't. I don't know. But you can more. you can get in yeah. there and, and do yeah. some drawing with some draw along with us and Disney animators. Sketch. So yeah. what the heck? That'd be yeah. kind of cool. Uh, and once again, don't forget we've got an incredible sale going on at creatureartteacher.com um, and giveaways too. You know, our, my introduction to animation course, which is I think it's over twelve hours, wow. uh, is free. We're just giving it away, and mm -hmm. uh, we've got a lot of Photoshop uh, brush packs are a dollar. Uh, several courses are a dollar. Lots of stuff going on. You can go over there with change in your pocket and come out with a whole bunch of ed education. Come out of this stronger than go you we're going in. That's our that's our goal yeah. for everybody. That's okay. And um, and like Don was saying, we're in a crazy time and uh, crazy time breeds crazy thoughts. But here's a crazy thought: Why not be nice to one another and put some beauty back into the world? We're all artists, and it's our job. So go out, put some beauty back into the world. Be nice to one another. Mm -hmm. Put your shopping cart away. <laughs> uh, all that kind of stuff. Anything that makes somebody else's life a little bit easier, do it. Yeah. Because uh, that's that's how we get through this together. And uh, that's it. You got anything to add? No, it's awesome. Thanks again for letting me kind of pop in. Originally, it was going to be just a. Originally, it was going to be. I'll hand it off at the porch, and <laughs> and then it's like, well, wait a minute, maybe we can chat. So yeah. I'm, very, I'm glad we did very this. Pleased to do this. So thank yeah. You. yeah. And Dustin, take it away, buddy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And if you guys are interested in any photography, uh, you can check out my Instagram at Dustin underscore Blaze. I do a lot of wildlife photography over there. And I post a new photo there each day. And so you can go over there, check that out if you're interested in that kind of stuff. And uh, I actually have a reference pack coming out soon. So keep in touch for that. And we will see you guys next week, Tuesday, in the Tuesday. morning. And so until then, Cowboy Bebop. See you guys. That's awesome.